Ten years ago, a sudden wave of epidemics swept across the planet, turning people into zombies. Then the usual human life came to an end. What followed was a long period of chaos, with clashes everywhere. People killed and slaughtered each other for resources or to take over safe havens. And some bastards killed just for fun. There were cars parked haphazardly on the bridge spanning East Lapis Road. On the highway on a red sports bike was Yang Zheng, a 20-year-old guy who had received the Doomsday System a year ago. The rewards given out by this system can be used to level up anything, and it changed the guy's fate. The tired Yang Zheng gazed at the road in front of him. At a height of one and a half meters, a faintly visible streak glittered. The boy saw that it was a thin metal fishing line. It was impossible to dodge. After hitting the obstacle, the driver was twisted headfirst into the ground. At the same time, his bike flew further down the road. After sliding a few meters along the road, Yang Zheng reached a truck with several unknown people hiding in the back. A guy with a mohawk looked out of the car. When he saw the body lying on the ground, he shouted to his buddies that they had managed to kill another one. The silhouette of another bandit appeared behind him. He grinned and patted his partner's bald head, noting that the steel wire had never let them down. Approaching the victim, the type muttered that their gang couldn't even find one set of clothes, and this guy was flaunting a clean suit like an aristocrat. The leader then ordered the poor man's bike to be searched. The ragamuffins who ran up to the vehicle replied that there was nothing there. The leader with the headband shouted in anger that there was no way the victim would leave the house empty-handed. Disappointed that they had been wasting their time on the street for so long, he ordered the intruder to be chopped to pieces. The mohawked sidekick approached and pulled a machete from behind his back. Looking madly at the biker lying there, he swung his blade. However, the bandit's attack was answered by a sudden stabbing blow that confused the attacker. The next instant, the hand holding the machete soared into the air. The shocked squad leader saw a mohawked head flying in his direction. Terrified, he caught the balderdash flying at him and screamed with fear. With one blow, the mysterious stranger severed the bandit's arm and head, causing a stupor among his accomplices. Pointing his hand at the man who had killed their mate, the ringleader asked who he was and why he was playing dead. The delicate fellow in the business suit silently adjusted his jacket and looked at the rascals. One of the thugs, bleeding with sweat, was still wondering what had killed his friend and how. Yang Zheng said that while he hadn't done anything wrong, he wanted to clarify something. Looking at the gang leader, he asked if it was their group that carved up the camp on East Lapis Road. Smiling, the squad leader confirmed that it was his men who had massacred those poor souls. Pointing his finger at his buddies, he added that all of his guys took part in the massacre. One of the thugs confirmed that not only did they kill all the men there, but they also had fun with the remaining women. One of the scoundrels replied to his underling that he was not, and that he had merely hanged a family of three and watched with interest as the necks of these brats were broken. After listening to all this information, Yang Zheng closed his eyes and replied that he wanted to do everything painlessly first. Glaring angrily at his enemies, the guy suddenly muttered that he was now promising that they would all die in agony. The leader of the group angrily asked the stranger if he thought he could handle them all alone. Without hearing an answer, the leader ordered his subordinates to kill the guy in the suit. The next instant, the bandits drew their guns and joyously began firing toward their victim. Straightening his arm and looking at the people shooting, Yang Zheng said that he couldn't even be scratched with this method. The bullets fired suddenly slammed into the guy's body and either flattened or ricocheted off to the sides. The gang leader looked at the stranger in bewilderment, wondering if he had a bulletproof suit. Go to hell! shouted the leader of the group, and pulling out his gun, also opened fire on the victim. His bullets immediately hit Zheng's head, knocking him off balance at last. That headshot made the guy's whole body fall backwards. The leader, meanwhile, had already managed to shoot the entire clip. The smoke from the intense firing was coming out of the barrel. Rejoicing in his victory, the type with the headband praised the stranger's costume, noting that his head was still unprotected. But suddenly, Zheng leaned on his foot, shattering the asphalt beneath him. The bullet that hit her head didn't pierce her, but only left a small mark and took away ten health points. The bandits looked at this miracle in horror. The leader shouted in bewilderment that it could not be, for he had shot the victim in the head and he should be dead by now. With a twinkle in his eyes, the guy looked at his opponents and said that now it was his turn. With one hand, the suit-clad type grabbed a brightly glowing sword from behind his back. With his other hand, he took the pistol. Pointing it at his opponents, he fired a single shot. The bullet flew past all the bandits who continued to stand still. Shortly after the bullet flew past the last thug, there was a sudden bright flash in front of the squad. In the next instant, Zheng ran from enemy to enemy with lightning speed, inflicting several deep wounds on each of them with his blade. At that moment, 
It seemed to the bandits that their opponent had simply vanished. Realizing that the stranger was behind them, the thugs looked back in horror. Examining his hand, the leader grinned and remarked that, surprisingly, he wasn't even hurt. But just then, a scream from one of his subordinates sounded behind his back. Looking at his palm, the bald man watched in horror as it began to blacken and vaporize. In the next instant, blue flames enveloped the villain's entire body. The man clutched his head and cried out doomedly. In fear, the squad leader found that all of his subordinates were burning brightly. Suddenly, an energy circle formed around his feet. Immediately, a stream of scalding flame burst from his mouth. The pain was so intense that the leader quickly began to lose consciousness. Clutching his throat, the type with the bandage on his forehead screamed frantically. Reaching out his hand to Jang, the squad leader begged him to spare him, promising that he wouldn't do anything bad again. Moving away from the epicenter of the general conflagration, the guy in the suit told the leader of the group to pass his words to the king of the underworld. On the move, Jung tossed his sword aside and it evaporated into space. With his other hand, he materialized sunglasses out of thin air. The system immediately sent a notification that the task had been completed and the player was awarded two experience points. Getting on the bike, Jung distributed improvement points, adding a level to his vehicle. The system accepted the enhancement and responded that the bike was upgraded. A new Hellfire enhancement was also received, adding an additional 100% to the speed. Happy with his vehicle's new ability, the guy immediately decided to try it out by accelerating to the max. Distances began to be traveled much more rapidly. Jung raced across the clear surface, splashing water behind him. So he decided to take a shortcut across the shallow lake. Looking at him, memories from a year ago popped up in the guy's head. Then he came across two big men. One of them looked angrily at the weak boy and asked him where he had come from and how he dared to steal food from the Fang family's property. Wiping the blood from his broken face, Jung replied that he had been gathering food in this forest for years. Angry, he asked why these thugs had only been here for two minutes and already called this place someone's domain. At the same moment, the type in the white t-shirt reached into his pocket and pulled something out of it. With a strong wave of his hand toward a nearby tree, the big guy nailed a metal emblem to it. Pointing to the sign, the bulky man said that this forest was now the officially reserved property of the Fang family. A disgruntled Jeng raised his fist and angrily asked how the rest of the people could survive if the big clans were so brazen. The expected response from the pumped-up type was a powerful punch to the face. The boy fell on his back and lost consciousness. Blood spurted from his mouth onto the ground. The bandit standing next to him calmly informed Jeng that if he ever appeared in the forest area again, he was finished. The grove adjoined a large lake. When he woke up, he wandered toward the sandy beach. Sitting under a tree, he lamented that the Fang family was taking over more and more of the neighboring territories. And if this went on, he would have nowhere else to go. Suddenly, an information table appeared in front of his eyes, notifying Zheng that he had received the Doomsday System. Looking curiously at the previously unseen phenomenon, the boy wondered what it could mean. Suddenly, another message appeared, showing Zheng's stats. The initial assignment was displayed, ordering him to clean himself up with the items he had been given. On the ground in front of the hero, a knife, a razor, and shaving foam came from somewhere. Not expecting such a gift of fate, the boy immediately ran to the water. After applying the foam on his face, Jung thought that even though it was strange, there was no point in refusing, and it wouldn't get any worse anyway. Taking a knife, the boy began to clip the excess hair off his head. Finished, he opened the system and wondered what he should do next. Immediately, he received a notification that the mission was complete, and the level point he received could be used for various improvements. Glancing at the information panel, Zheng wondered what he wanted to improve now. Then he remembered he had some fruit in his pocket. The boy pulled a crushed apple out of there, sadly noting that it looked like he had crushed it in the process of fighting. Deciding that there was nothing wrong with it, Zheng ordered the system to improve this fruit. In the next instant, the apple suddenly evaporated from his hand. Looking at the empty palm with bewilderment, the boy suddenly noticed that a shadow had fallen on him from behind that hadn't been there before. Wary, he turned around to see what had changed behind his back. The boy studied in surprise the fruit tree that had grown in a second behind him. But after a couple seconds, the system sent him a new task. It said that Jung needed to kill 20 zombies as a reward for one level point. Night had replaced day. The moon peeked out from behind the clouds, lightly illuminating the earth. The boy lay in the crowns of the tree and ate the apples picked from it, thinking about his new task. Taking a bite of the fruit, he decided he wasn't desperate enough yet to go and risk his life fighting zombies, especially considering he was still hungry. Having finished the apples, the boy lay for a while in thought until he fell asleep from fatigue.
Suddenly, Zhang woke up, smelling ash through his sleep. When he opened his eyes, he saw orange lights coming from somewhere below. Looking down in surprise, the guy decided to find out what was going on down there. But what he saw made him realize that he wasn't going to get another good night's sleep. His tree was burning brightly from the very base. The fire was coming up to the branches where the boy was sitting. Looking to the side, Zheng saw the big guys who had beaten him up during the day standing nearby. They shouted to the boy that they had warned him and told him to stay out of their sight. Smirking, the t-shirt type muttered that this was the result of the boy ignoring the Fang family's demand. Tensely, Zheng thought that he had already completely forgotten about those bastards. Disappointedly clinging to the tree, the boy realized that as long as people like the Fang family existed, people like him would never have a normal life. Deciding that he had nothing to lose anyway, the boy stood up, knife in hand, and shouted at the offenders that they had asked for it. Not hearing the ragged man's words, one bandit asked the other how they could have missed the tree on the beach and where it had come from. The second one replied that it didn't matter, and the main thing now was to burn it with that idiot in the branches. But in the next instant, Zheng swung his knife and leaped from the tree at the villains. Not having time to react to the unexpected attack, the big man in a t-shirt remained standing still. Thus, the hero cut the bandit down with one blow. The second thug looked at his bleeding partner in horror. With a shout, he reached behind his back to pull out his gun. It was just in time for Zheng to notice. Trying to get ahead of his opponent, the boy quickly lunged at him, hoping to stab him first. But a moment later, a gunshot rang out. The two silhouettes stood motionless against each other. In the background, a fruit tree was burning with scarlet flames, illuminating the surrounding forest. With his left hand, Zheng swept his opponent's gun aside. His right hand stabbed the knife right into the bandit's heart. After standing for a while and struggling to stay on his feet, the shirtless type couldn't stand and collapsed dead to the ground. Zheng turned around and looked over his shoulder at the burnt fruit tree. The fire had already reached the foliage where he had been sitting a short time ago. Fang family. Thanks for reminding me that people like me would be much better off without you, the boy thought angrily. Turning around, the ragged man walked away from the place. Then he decided that if the Fang clan burned his tree, he would burn their family business to the ground. Some time passed. Clouds slowly descended on the mountain range. Jung stood with his knife in front of the corpses of several zombies he had just killed. The system alerted him to the third level. Among the rewards he received were torn pants, sneakers, and jacket, as well as 35 rounds of ammunition for his gun. However, the guy was unhappy that he had been killing zombies all morning, and the loot was so weak. Looking at the muscles in his arm, the boy still noted that he had managed to gain two levels and experience points. It made it much easier for him to deal with zombies than before. Current stats showed level 3 in key characteristics and six experience points available. After reviewing the information again, Zheng clicked on the panel to pick up the loot he had received. The system immediately alerted to the receipt of new items and changed the hero's clothes. Looking at the gun he had taken from the dead bandit, the guy decided that it would be a good idea to raise his own level now. Then he thought that this world was not only inhabited by ordinary zombies, but also by much stronger monsters. They were harder to kill, their bodies were stronger, and some of them even had superpowers. After examining the trophy, Zheng decided that this barrel would still be useless against the ferocious zombies. However, early on, this weapon was quite attractive, so the guy immediately improved it by pumping up the damage and critical rating. Noting that the look of the gun hasn't changed since the improvement, the boy joked that it looks like he'll have to buy skins for donations. Suddenly, gunshots rang out somewhere ahead. It made the hero nervous. The man in gray rags standing there opened his mouth in surprise. He had just been shot from behind. After a few seconds of realization, he fell backwards. Behind the ragged man's back stood a type in camouflage uniform. The man smoking a cigarette was a member of the Fang family's mercenary corps. Looking at the corpse, he turned to the dead man, saying that he should have run away and died somewhere else. But this way, he only had to waste a bullet. Standing nearby, a man in camouflage and body armor asked the leader what he should do with the woman. Nearby, a young girl in rags and with pink hair sat shaking with fear near the van. Looking at her, the commander ironically said that she was the only one who had lost her comrade. With a sense of dominance, the leader pronounced that now his boys would definitely take care of her. The boy stood behind a tree with his gun at the ready and listened to what the unknown men in camouflage were talking about. Looking out, he counted the number of enemies. There were five men, four of whom were armed with rifles. The weapon wasn't automatic, but it was already causing a lot of problems by its mere existence. 
The latter was armed with a revolver. Despite being outnumbered, Jung decided that he should have an advantage given his level and pistol. Meanwhile, the military commander asked the girl if she would undress herself or have help. The ragged woman sat crying, shrunken and unmoving. It's been a long time since I've come across such beauties, the commander said, drooling and holding out his hand to the woman. But in the next instant, a shot rang out from the side. The bullet went straight to the leader's head. An unknown man suddenly started firing from the nearby bushes. The camouflage-clad squad panicked at the sight of the dead leader. The guy was trying to take aim at the enemies and shoot them in the heads, bypassing the body armor. Without sparing any ammunition, Jung fired as fast as possible, utilizing the effect of surprise. The bullets reached the target, despite the rather large scatter. Thanks to the improvements, even the body armor was not a serious obstacle. After surveying the battlefield, the guy decided to head out, changing magazines as he went. Snapping on a new clip, he decided it was a pretty easy victory. Moving towards the girl, the boy was killing the enemies who had survived the bullets and were squirming in the struggle for life. Squatting down, Zheng extended his hand towards the stranger. The girl, not realizing what this type wanted from her, decided that he had the same goal as those military men. Embarrassed, she thought she could definitely tolerate it once, especially since this guy had saved her, and he was also cute. Suddenly, an emergency task popped up in front of Zheng's face, offering to rescue the victim for a reward of two level points. The boy looked thoughtfully at the panel and didn't understand. After all, he had definitely interrupted all the Fang family soldiers and was certain that they were dead. As soon as he thought about it, the girl's face twisted with animal horror and her finger pointed at something behind the hero's back. Suddenly, there was a strange wheezing and a sound like a large object being lifted off the ground from behind. When he turned around, the guy saw an unusual zombie with tentacles instead of a head. The creature said it now understood what it was like to be shot in the head. As it prepared for battle, it said that it was too relaxed, but still a mere human could not destroy it. The girl looked with fear and some shame at what was in place of the squad leader's head. Zombie laughed and said that he hadn't even shown how terrifying he could be yet. Looking at the face blade, the ragged girl closed her eyes so she wouldn't get sick. However, a mere second later, the girl vomited at the not-so-pleasant sight of her opponent. Grabbing her stomach with her hand, she ran away to the side, saying that this monster was too creepy. Already in the next instant, the zombie lunged at the people near the van. He was so fast that the moment he launched his attack, Jung immediately lost sight of him. Just before the guy realized it, a blue hand immediately appeared near his nose. One ready, the monster said contentedly, driving the man into the wall of the van with all his might. Looking at the frightened girl, the zombie muttered that humans were like thin paper to him. Anticipating what he could do to his victim, the monster pounced on her screaming that now it was her turn. But for some reason, he couldn't get the girl. Looking around, the zombie saw that his right arm was stuck in the van and there was no way to free it. Deciding that the victim wasn't going anywhere anyway, the monster walked over to the hole in the truck to see what was causing it to get stuck. As he peered into the darkness, he saw a completely unharmed boy holding his hand. Having never encountered anything like this before, the zombie shrieked that this simply couldn't be happening. In response, Zheng leaned on his right foot without letting go of the creature's arm, and with his left foot, he kicked the monster in the side of its ribs. A blow of incredible force threw the zombie a dozen meters aside, crushing it against a tree. A few seconds later, the monster stood heavily on one knee. The monster was perplexed as to how a normal human could be so strong. Sniffing his opponent, he assumed it was a zombie soldier though the boy didn't smell right. When he looked up, he noticed that the boy was nowhere to be found. He wondered aloud where the little man might have disappeared to. The girl looked toward the hole in the van. Then she shrugged her shoulders questioningly. But suddenly, the sound of a bolt being jerked to the left answered all the monster's questions. Glaring angrily at the monster in military uniform and pointing a gun at its head, Zheng asked who the zombie soldiers were. Staring directly at the weapon in the kid's hands, the monster said that creatures like him were high-level military units obtained by crossing fierce zombies and humans. No matter how much I think about it, I still can't figure out why he's so strong. But we can try to distract him. As long as it hasn't hit my brain, I still have a chance. Thought the zombie, hopefully. Curious as to who might have wanted such cruel experiments, Zheng asked the enemy who bred the monster soldiers. The creature replied that Fang Wenying, the chief scientist of the Fang family's research laboratory was behind the development. Looking questioningly at his opponent, the boy thought that once again, this clan was involved in everything. Looking at the boy contentedly, the zombie considered that the boy was finally hesitating, 
and if he could manage to confuse the boy even more, there might be a moment to strike. But as soon as the monster thought about it, there was an immediate gunshot. The creature was dumbfounded by such a drastic change in the enemy's mood. As he fell on his back, the zombie thought about how today's youth had no concept of fair combat. However, the brain was not hit by the gunshot. The monster realizes this and decides to pretend to be dead, and in the future, find strong zombie soldiers to kill the human. But immediately, the first bullet was followed by a second bullet to the creature's head, and following the second, the boy released a third. As he continued firing time after time, Jung realized that the Fong family was starting to piss him off more and more. The gunshots just wouldn't stop. The guy seemed to have gone mad. The boy was firing his second round in a row while talking about the Fang family and the super soldiers. His behavior frightened the girl behind him. After using up five magazines and turning the monster's face into a bloody mess, Jung finally stopped. Thinking that the points for completing the task had calmed him down a bit, the guy looked at the assignment screen. After thinking about a more efficient distribution of experience, the hero decided to spend one point to pump himself up and save the rest for now. Thus, Jung had reached the fourth level in the Doomsday system. Realizing that the gun would take 24 hours to reload, the guy got a little frustrated. Suddenly, the girl asked him where he was staring at all the time. Without answering the question, the boy said that she was now in no danger and could leave this place. In parallel, Jung added a revolver, a rifle, and a tactical vest to his inventory. The frightened girl asked the hero if he could escort her to the village if she would pay him. The guy answered in the negative, saying he didn't have time for her. He thought to himself that the main goal for him was to kill as many zombies as possible, to collect more experience points, and for that, it was worth preparing. With a wave of his hand, Jung said goodbye to the girl and headed off in the opposite direction. But immediately he was distracted, which made the guy really pissed off. The stranger clutched at the guy's leg and burst into tears, asking what would happen to her if she came across the same bastards on the way back, and could a hero like Jeng allow such a beautiful girl to be bullied again? At the ragamuffins shouting that her grandfather was the headman and could pay well, the boy saw a side task appear that gave him two level points. That's when he realized that real-life tasks could be added to the system. After pondering and assuming that it wouldn't be that difficult, Jung accepted the task. After a while, the couple found themselves in a junkyard. When the girl asked what they were doing here, the guy said that he was looking for a suitable car. The companion replied that there was no point in it, as all the cars had rotted away ten years ago. But Jung replied that he had already found a suitable car anyway. Upon approaching the car, the boy stated that the condition of this vehicle was better than others. The girl, surprised at the choice, asked if she was blind or if there was really no engine. The guy only laughed in response because he had his own trump card. Putting his hand on the machine, Jung began to emit energy into its body. Suddenly, there was a bright flash and the entire car glittered with blue light. The girl shrieked in surprise, saying she couldn't see anything. Suddenly, the flash ended abruptly, and she was finally able to look toward the car. What she discovered raised a lot of questions for her. A shiny new Aston Martin GT appeared before her eyes. Jung spent one level point, thus completely transforming the car. Not believing her eyes, the pink-haired girl shrieked that it was all an illusion. Somehow, the guy managed to get his companion into the passenger seat. So they traveled to the village with the survivors. The girl looked at the interior of the car with interest. With delight, she said that nowadays, few people can afford a car, except the rich from the Dawn City. But the guy had turned the junk into a luxurious sports car, like a magician. Looking at the fellow traveler, the beauty noted that he not only saved girls, but also turned garbage into treasure. She jokingly called the boy a hero sent from above. Jang looked at his companion in bewilderment. Looking at the road, the boy embarrassedly replied that he was no hero, but a simple guy who disliked the Fang family. The girl introduced herself, saying her name was Xiao Qi. In response, the guy said his name was Yang Jing. Suddenly, the rearview mirror suddenly showed a cobblestone flying straight at the car. The hero, who switched his attention from socializing to the road in time, saw the approaching danger. Shouting to his companion to hold on tight, the guy sharply turned the steering wheel sideways, avoiding collision with the object. Panicked with surprise, Xiao Qi asked what was wrong. But a moment later, a huge boulder fell from behind the car shattering the paved road to pieces. Immediately after, a loud rumbling sound was heard behind him. In the rearview mirror, Jung saw a stone foot. It was a raging all-stone zombie. The monster deftly tossed the boulder, trying on its weight for the next throw. A moment later, he hurled a rock at the moving car with great speed. 
Zhang once again sharply twisted the steering wheel to the side in an effort to evade the collision. A boulder flew past, falling to the left and raising a cloud of sand. The girl noted that it was not the first time she had seen this monster. Moreover, it was often seen here, loitering around the neighborhood. The guy shouted furiously, asking why she hadn't mentioned it sooner. The girl, a little embarrassed, replied that she had simply forgotten. Jung said that they had to get rid of the big guy somehow, since they couldn't keep dodging flying rocks. When the boy saw a fork in the road ahead, he asked which way to go. The girl said that the road on the right was fine, though broken in places. When Zheng asked what was on the left, Xiaoqi said that there was a canyon that way, but the bridge had collapsed. Having chosen a direction, the guy put on the gas. Unexpectedly to the girl, the boy turned left. Overwhelmed, Xiaoqi asked why her companion had turned that way. She had warned him that there was a broken bridge that way. Let's die together! Zheng suddenly spoke out. Appearing horrified, the girl screamed for him to let her out of the car immediately. Smirking, the guy replied that he had promised to get her to the village, so he wouldn't let her go halfway. At this moment, a furious zombie threw three large stones towards the car at once. With great luck, all the boulders again missed their target. Meanwhile, the travelers were already approaching the broken bridge. The crossing was destroyed. The distance between the spans was very large. The car had reached the edge of the cliff. There was no turning back. The girl started screaming exhaustedly while a caustic smile appeared on Jung's face. Sticking his hand out the open window, the guy spent a level point, blue energy pouring out of his fingers. Chunks of concrete materialized out of nowhere, forming the bridge supports and roadbed. Thus, the bridge that collapsed a few years ago was miraculously rebuilt again. Sticking her head out the window, the girl wondered if he could do either. But suddenly, Zheng abruptly turned around to face the furious zombie running at them. The huge stone monster had already broken through to the bridge by then. Xiaoqi clutched her head and cried, begging her traveling companion to go from here soon and stop making up stuff. Jung stuck his hand out the window and waved it at the creature, calling it to him. As he approached, the zombie began to toss another cobblestone in his hand. Throwing it into the air, the creature pulled out a stone bat and prepared to smack the boulder into the humans. But then the solid support under his feet was abruptly lost, and the monster began to fall into the abyss. Under the weight of the zombies, the bridge abutment collapsed, once again destroying it. The wandless carcass of the stone-shaped monster flew into the river flowing through the canyon. The system announced that the status of the bridge had deteriorated from intact to collapsed. Thanks to his newly acquired ability, Zheng was able to get the already used level point back to himself. The dumbfounded Xiaoqi couldn't believe her eyes that the guy had killed the monster in such a graceful way. Noticing that he wasn't getting any added experience, the boy said that a raging zombie couldn't just be killed. The girl asked what her companion was talking about. Zheng pressed the gas pedal to the floor without further ado, saying that they'd better speed up since the monster would obviously come out of there equally, or later. The girl explained that they are unlikely to meet again, as all fierce zombies have their own territories. And thanks to this, you can avoid meeting them when collecting resources. The boy asked with interest if the Fang family was taking resources away from their village. Xiaoqi explained that the Fang clan's mercenary corps would take everything away, but the forces under the direct command of the family leave the village with 20%. Irritated, Zheng was surprised that the clan was taking 80% of the resources at once without lifting a finger. The girl noted that in return, the Fan clan sent people to protect the surrounding areas from zombies. But at the same time, they confiscated all the weapons from the residents. The boy said that in the end, the bandits took away all the villagers' belongings and then said they would protect them themselves. Although, the boy said, he wasn't surprised that the Fang family was doing that. Suddenly, the sound of approaching cars was heard from in front. Xiaoqi shouted in panic that the Fang clan's motorcade was coming towards them. The sports car with the travelers equaled the silver jeep. From the window of a large SUV, a kid looked surprised at the passing Aston Martin. In response, a suspicious-looking man glared back at him with an embittered glare. After the vehicles parted ways, the passenger in the jeep called out to his driver, keeping his eyes on the sports car. Pointing his finger at the speeding car, the guy in the yellow jacket shouted angrily that some guy driving that car was staring at him. Pushing the driver, he ordered him to turn around and follow the sports car. The girl sitting next to him mumbled that she didn't see the need to make such a detour since they still had to collect tribute from other villages. Besides, if someone can afford to drive an Aston Martin, they must be a hard man. After listening to the lecture that such expensive cars don't just appear on the road, a guy in a yellow jacket named Fang Su sat down with his companion and asked if she was going to teach him. Annoyed, Olsen, the 10th resource team's guard leader, 
replied that she wasn't going to cross anyone. She only reminded them that if they got into town late, her companion would be late for a date with some celebrity. Remembering this, the guy waved his hand and said that, in that case, they should give up the chase and immediately make their way to the next village. Looking at the dim-witted interlocutor, the girl thought that this jerk would do well to go to school. Meanwhile, the sports car was approaching the shipping containers standing in several rows. From one of the crates, hearing the rumble of an approaching car, a man in rags emerged, holding a homemade bat at the ready. Suddenly, a girl looked out of the passenger seat of the approaching sports car and waved at her grandfather. Seeing Xiaoqi, the old man was unspeakably happy to recognize his granddaughter. The man tearfully said that when her group didn't return after finding a new parking spot, he thought those had died. The girl replied that she was fine, but the Fang family had killed Chung. Pointing at the companion, Xiao Qi said that she had returned home thanks to Young Zheng. She also asked her grandfather to give the money left in her stash to this guy, since she had already promised him a reward. The boy waved his hand in a friendly manner to the villagers. Moving closer, the old man whispered in his granddaughter's ear that the Fang family's resource team had just arrived, and now they had no stash. Frustratedly turning to Zheng, the girl said that she wouldn't be able to fulfill her promise. Nevertheless, she offered her companion to repay the rescue in another way. Not paying attention to the tempting offer, the guy walked towards the car, replying that he didn't need a reward. Immediately, the system sent a notification about successful completion of the task. For the last time, Zheng only asked Xiaoqi to point out where there were zombies around here. The girl pointed her finger in the direction, saying that half an hour's walk there were mountains with a whole horde of monsters. But she also noted that there were a couple of troublesome rabid zombies there as well. With a hopeful expression, Xiaoqi offered to help in this case. Without listening to the end, Zheng replied that the girl could leave the extermination of the monsters to him. Embarrassed, Xiaoqi muttered that they would be very grateful for such help. Immediately, the guy saw a new task in front of him. This confirmed his hunch that the tasks he receives in the real world are also displayed in the system. Getting behind the wheel of the sports car, he drove enthusiastically in the direction the girl pointed. Looking at the departing car, Xiaoqi thought that this guy seemed trustworthy. An old man standing nearby asked to recall the name. The girl said that guy's name was Yang Zheng, wondering what her grandfather's memory was. However, the man said that he meant the name for his future great-grandson. Xiaoqi was embarrassed and asked her grandfather why he was bringing the topic of relationships everywhere. Then she shamefully ran away. The old man angrily demanded that his granddaughter immediately come up with a name for his future son. Then the man looked toward the departing hero, thinking that this young man had a lot of courage to go into the mountains alone. Especially when you consider that even the guards don't risk messing with those creatures. After a while, Zheng reached a dense forest thicket. After exiting the vehicles and walking between the trees, the hero activated one point, raising his level to fifth. Thanks to this, a new ability was added to his profile. He could now see the levels of his opponents, as well as keep track of his remaining health level. Looking at the update, Zheng realized that he could still be injured and would feel cuts and bites. However, among other things, he now had resistance to poisons. Looking to his left, the hero saw a group of zombies approaching. Above each of them, he saw levels of creatures. Without a second's hesitation, the guy lunged at the crowd of monsters, cutting them all down with a few swift blows. After that, the system notified that the experience bar was full and an additional experience point was added. With all the points available, Zheng immediately improved the gun. Finally, the gun in the guy's hand was transformed with a sight and an improved magazine. The bullets were also able to ricochet. While examining the weapon, the hero didn't notice at all when someone attacked him from behind with a spear. After a few blows, the guy was thrown back. He dropped the knife from his hand in surprise. Coming to his senses, the boy assessed the situation and grabbed the knife again in flight. Landing on his feet, Zheng was surprised at the force of the impact. As he looked closer, he saw a female figure standing in the distance. Standing nearby was a fierce level 5 zombie named Gloria. Holding another spear in her hand, she glared at the boy with her one eye intact. As he prepared for battle, Zheng noticed that this was the first time he had seen a fierce zombie with its own name. At this moment, the monster began to unwind the weapon in his hands, calculating the distance to the target. At a certain point, the furious zombie stopped and swung around, taking aim at the man. In the next instant, the creature threw the spear towards Zheng with incredible force. Managing to assess the situation, the boy jerked aside and the pike flew past grazing the boy's cheek slightly. Whistling behind him, the spear slammed into a tree behind the hero's back. 
The blow was of such great force that the pike effortlessly pierced through the plant. In response, Jung pulled out a gun and fired several shots at the zombies. But the monster crossed his arms and simply repelled the bullets with his muscles. After successfully defending herself, the zombie looked down. There was a hole in her arm with a bullet sticking out of it. Realizing she had no chance at range without her spears, the monster snapped out of it. After running sideways away from the hero, the zombie girl noticed that he was shooting at her without hitting her. Jung aimed at the enemy, but he couldn't keep up with her speed, so all the bullets flew past the target. The creature then hid behind one of the trees. Aiming the monster, the guy thought that at first it underestimated the power of his gun, but realizing the danger, sharply began to reduce the distance. Looking at the tree behind which the monster was standing, the boy realized that this zombie was intelligent and did not fight on empty instincts. This was different from what the Fang family had said, but in the next second, a spear suddenly flew out from behind a tree, swiftly approaching Jung. The hero was surprised that the monster threw the spade in a curved trajectory. Relying on the strength of his blade, the guy decided to repel the attack with it, but the speed at which the spear was launched was too fast. The impact split the knife in two. After being hit in the chest, Jang flew a few meters away and slammed into the nearest tree. As his back hit the obstacle, the boy screamed in pain. Blood spurted from his mouth, and the system notified the boy that his health had been reduced by 30 units. Grabbing the spear with his hand, Zheng ripped it from his chest. Meanwhile, the zombie girl was already preparing to stab the guy with a second picked up spade. Upon seeing the monster, the hero quickly came up with a plan of counterattack. Realizing that the lack of movement would definitely ruin him, Zheng snapped out of his seat. At the same instant, a furious zombie threw a spear at the fleeing enemy. Looking at the attacking monster, the guy realized that the creature had even considered the trajectory of his movement when throwing. But immediately, he decided that he had an advantage, since a spear that had already been thrown could not change its direction. With these thoughts, Zheng abruptly changed direction. Leaping past the flying pike, the boy was not far from his opponent, and raising his pistol, fired a shot. Realizing that under no circumstances would the zombie come out from behind the tree, the hero used the ricochet ability. After the shot, the bullet bounced off two trees and changed its trajectory drastically, heading straight for the monster's head. Hearing neither a hit nor a body fall, the boy looked out from behind cover. Keeping his gun at the ready, the hero ran to the tree behind where the zombie was and checked what had become of it. But the shelter was empty. Only a pool of blood on the ground indicated that the shot had been successful. Lowering his hands, the guy looked around and realized that the monster had managed to sneak away. Walking through the surrounding bushes, Zheng discovered another pool of blood. After following the footprints, the hero reached a cave of enormous size. After examining the entrance, he assumed that it was the boss's lair. Entering the cave, the boy observed the ever-increasing pools of blood that led deeper and deeper into the cave. Walking a little farther, Zheng found a makeshift pedestal that held a gold medal, sneakers, and a picture frame with a picture in it. Upon examining the award, the hero realized that it had been won by someone in the Olympics. Next, the boy's gaze shifted to the photo. It showed a woman and a boy. The inscription said that this athlete was a gold medalist at the Olympic Games. Taking the photo in hand, the hero wondered why a raging zombie would keep such things in a cave, and whether she might still have memories of the times when she was human. But suddenly, a chill ran down Jung's back. He felt that someone was going to attack him from behind. The enemies promptly bared their weapons and prepared for battle. Shots and screams rang out. The two opponents pounced on each other. A long fight ensued, accompanied by dozens of mutual blows. The spear attacks from the zombie woman were answered by the Jung guy with pistol shots. It seemed to be a battle of attrition. In an instant, both opponents grabbed each other's hands. The zombie girl glared furiously at the guy, bleeding everywhere. Standing in his tattered clothes, Jung thought that this monster had only gotten stronger after the gunshots. Could it be the fact that he touched the framed photo had such an effect? Suddenly, a child's cry was heard from somewhere in front. Someone was desperately calling for mom. After these sounds, the zombie relaxed and listened anxiously. After a moment, it was as if the monster forgot about Jung's existence and rushed towards the direction where the child was screaming. Immediately, in order not to lose the resulting advantage, the guy took aim at the running zombie girl. But his hand trembled, and he did not dare to fire a shot. An SUV with an open body was parked in the woods near the cave. The monster was rapidly approaching the jeep, which seemed to be empty. In the back of the pickup truck was a large wooden box from which a child's voice was calling out for help from mom. The zombie girl, practically running to the car, reached out for the box. 
But at the same moment, the pickup truck took off sharply, showering dust on the monster. The creature seemed to be very much surprised and upset. Without a second's hesitation, it rushed to catch up with the receding car. By then, a large group of people had piled out of the containers in the village area. In addition, two SUVs were parked nearby. Men in superior equipment surrounded the village headman and his granddaughter, pointing automatic rifles at them. Fang Su, the leader of the armed group, stood in front of the frightened residents. Irritated, he asked the villagers where the man who stole the sports car from him was. Xiao Qi angrily thought that this shameless man was talking as if the car he himself was driving wasn't stolen from someone else. Slapping his face with his hand, the villain complained that his date with the star girl had already fallen through, and now the villagers didn't want to say anything. Suddenly, he saw a pickup truck pull up from the side of the woods with a load behind it. Joyfully, the gang leader approached the car. After shouting that the villagers would see something very cool today, Fang Su grabbed the cloth covering the rectangular object with his hand. Tearing off the coverlet, he showed the men a huge iron cage. Behind the bars sat a fierce female zombie and a smaller monster crouched behind her. Overwhelmed by what she saw, Zhao Qi recognized the monsters, saying that they were the creatures that attacked their village last time. Confirming the girl's hunch, Fang Su replied that if the residents were still not in the mood to talk, he would toss the headman's granddaughter into the cage to be eaten by that thing. And yet, despite the threats, the people continued to stand without uttering a word. Realizing that even that would not get the victims to talk, the gang leader radioed the sniper, ordering him to be on the lookout and shoot as soon as someone moved. The owner of the second walkie-talkie didn't answer, despite Fang Su's demands to reply that the order had been accepted. Jung stood over the sniper lying in his own blood. In his hand, he held the same spear that the monster had left in the forest. Taking the rifle from the corpse's hands, the guy lay down and took aim. It was then that he realized that Fang Su had used the maternal instinct left by this raging zombie to control her and force her to attack villages. Moreover, after the monster attacks, this bastard would come and steal from the residents under the guise of protection. Meanwhile, one of the gang members forced Chaoki into the back of a pickup truck at gunpoint. When he saw that the girl was slow, the balaclava-clad man said that if she was slow, he would shoot her. But the next moment, he was already being punished. A bullet from a large-caliber rifle crushed his head. All the guards instantly became agitated, and Fang Su ran to hide behind the SUV in panic. The bandits immediately opened overwhelming fire in the direction where the gunman was. But in response to their inaccurate shots, they began to take accurate hits on themselves one by one. The caliber of the sniper rifle was so large that it easily pierced through cars. Rushing off to his vehicle, the squad leader lamented that his sniper had flashed his location so quickly and allowed himself to be detected. In the rifle scope, Jung saw that the main target of this operation was 273 meters away. The guy held his breath and prepared to pull the trigger. But a moment later, he heard a pop in the distance and in his scope he saw a rocket shell from a portable launcher approaching him. This outcome of events almost put the hero in a stupor, but Jung reacted in time and managed to jump back. A moment later, there was an explosion where he was lying. Rolling down the slope and still holding the rifle, the guy took aim and fired a shot, trying to snag the SUV that was driving away. The bullet hit the rearview mirror of the car in which Fang Su was sitting. The leader ordered the driver to drive away at full speed because of the proximity of death. After turning around and rushing under gunfire toward town, the car pulled onto a dirt road. As he pulled out of the firing range, Fang Su noticed that a notification appeared on his smartwatch that they were far away from the target. Horrified, he looked at the new information that the bomb had been activated. That meant that the explosives they'd planted under the small zombie should go off soon. At the time the countdown started, the monsters were still sitting in the cage not trying to escape. At the same moment, the female heard strange sounds. The zombie baby sat and looked happily at his mom. The next instant, there was a small explosion in the pickup truck. The whole body was splattered with crimson blood. When the smoke cleared, the monster girl saw that there was no one else in the cage but her. At the same moment, judging from her eyes, she realized that she would never see her baby again. Immediately afterward, her gaze became serious, her eyes beginning to fill with a red light. After another moment, her pupils changed color and became like a scope. Exhaling steam out of herself, she stared angrily forward, as if she wanted to slaughter every single person. At that moment, the creature was so filled with hatred that it effortlessly tore through the metal bars and jumped out. Immediately afterward, she tore off in the direction the SUV with the bandits had gone. With her eyes, the zombie woman desperately searched out Fang Su's car. Suddenly, through the rock, she saw an SUV turning along the cliff. 
Raising its hand up, the creature materialized an electric spear out of thin air. A moment later, she had already tracked her target and swung to throw the spade at him. With a desperate shriek, the furious zombie hurled the spear towards the car with tremendous force. As it did with the attack on Jung, the pike arced in an arc and flew around the cliff, heading towards the SUV. Fang Su was thinking that he didn't care about the child, but he didn't want to lose Gloria. He didn't want to lose Gloria, especially since she was a convenient tool. Suddenly, the type heard a strange rumble behind him and wondered what was flying around. Looking up, he saw through the rearview mirror a large electric spear approaching them from behind. Fang Su didn't even have time to think about anything. In the same second, the spear stabbed into the car, piercing through it. The result was a massive explosion. Pika, on the other hand, flew out of the cloud of resulting smoke without any obstruction. After flying some distance, the spear fell right into the human's hand. Jung stood on the road, watching his enemy's car burn down. Examining the wreckage, the hero realized how much power that fierce zombie actually had. So the guy came to the conclusion that during their battle, the monster was restraining himself. Remembering that he heard an explosion off to the side of the village, the boy thought it was all because the thugs had killed the zombie woman's child. Pensive, Jung didn't immediately notice the danger. Coming to his senses, the guy threw his rifle up and pointed it in front of him. Opposite him stood calmly the creature that had just destroyed an entire SUV full of people in the blink of an eye. Sweating, Jung wondered how this monster was able to appear in front of him so suddenly. But he was alarmed that the monster girl didn't attack him. Only thinking that he would have been killed long ago, the guy noticed the zombie reaching out to her. For the first time in a long time, the hero experienced true terror. Should he fight now? And would he be able to hurt her if he pulled the trigger? But then, quite suddenly, the monster took the muzzle of his rifle and put it to his head. Without a shadow of a doubt, the monster asked the guy to kill her. The boy's fright changed to confusion and sadness. He understood what the creature was going through. At that moment, Zheng felt sorry for Gloria, the zombie woman as if she read it all in the guy's eyes, preparing her spear to attack, asking the hero to avenge them all. Instinctively, as if driven by the instincts of a monster, Gloria prepared to hurl her pike at the boy across the street. In the same second, the blade came almost right up to Zheng. Without further thought, the boy relented and pulled the trigger. A shot rang out. The bullet struck the zombie girl right in the head, causing her body to immediately stagger and fall backwards. Looking at the creature's corpse, the hero realized that she had purposely forced him to pull the trigger. Standing beside the vaporizing body, Jung said he remembered Gloria's words and promised the Fang family to pay for what they had done to both him and her. At the same moment, the system sent a lot of new notifications, alerting you to get a lot of experience for killing a raging zombie. Also, new items appeared in the inventory. Back in the village, the guy helped with the cleanup. At the end, he and Xiao Qi decided to look at the remaining weapons. After looking at the automatic rifles, the hero said that he had already taken everything he needed so the villagers could keep the rest. The girl shyly approached the boy and asked if he wanted to stay here and live with them. Jung replied that he wished he could, but the last time he thought about it, he was almost burned alive in a fruit tree. Reaching for the door of the sports car, the guy said that if he did nothing, trouble would probably find him on its own in a couple days. After getting behind the wheel, Jung gave one last shout that maybe they would see each other again and left the village on his own. Saying goodbye to the man who had saved her life, Xiao Qi wished the man good luck and told him that he would be able to accomplish everything. Already sprinting down the highway, the guy decided that his next stop would be Dawn City. At breakneck speed, the hero was racing toward his new goal. But within a couple minutes, he was standing near the cliff, saying he had completely forgotten about one thing. At the bottom of the canyon was still a raging, all-stone zombie, whose level the system, for some reason, didn't show. After a few moments, the guy reallocated all the available points to improve his equipment. Holding his spear and pistol, Zheng eyed his opponent with interest. Strongly, without ceremony, the hero decided that he would kill that zombie with just one throw. But then the guy's attention was caught by an object moving quickly down the canyon toward the stone monster. Without striking the desired blow, the boy simply watched the mysterious stranger. In the next instant, a long beam of blue-colored energy cut through the bottom of the gorge. It was so powerful that it pierced through the stone zombie. The furious zombie's body slumped, and someone placed their foot on its head. This mysterious killer was a guy wearing a respirator, shaved bald. It was the leader of the 10th security team, Wu Fengzhang. Annoyed, he remarked that the monster was so weak that there was no spirit of trial here. Grabbing his walkie-talkie out of his pocket, 
the bald hunter shouted that some asshole had said this zombie was strong. And he'd rushed over here just to take the creature down with a single blow. But a moment later, only his walkie-talkie was left in the place where Wu Fengzong had just been. The all-stone zombie that had risen to its feet grabbed the hunter's leg and began to spin him around. Swinging around, the monster threw the man into the wall with all his might. The system notified Zheng that the unknown person was unconscious. There were also multiple fractures and internal bleeding, and the total damage level was 60%. Looking closely at the body of the monster, the guy realized that, although the hunter's blow was spectacular, it did not reach its target, leaving only a scratch. The zombie had managed to cover its neck during the attack. Meanwhile, the monster had tossed up a boulder and was about to hit it with a bat, but after a second he was distracted by a glow from the side. The monster turned and saw a shining object flying toward him. The spear stabbed into the creature's head, causing a massive explosion. It seemed that the zombie had finally been defeated, but it soon became clear that it was only the armor covering his face that had cracked. Still, it was a good chance. Drawing his sniper rifle and taking aim, Zheng fired a precise shot at the monster. The bullet hit the monster's head, but it was followed by the rifle in its mouth. The hero jumped off the cliff and dropped his feet on his shoulders, shoving the gun right into the mouth of the raging zombie. Immediately, dozens of bright beams began spewing from the creature's head, beating against the ground and canyon walls. The zombie then collapsed heavily on the ground without any signs of life. And Jung saw a notification of a reward of three level points. A few seconds later, expiring sweat, Wu Fengzong woke up as well. Kneading his body and climbing out of the rock, he wondered what had happened. In front of him lay the dead boss. An unknown man stood next to it. It seemed to the hunter that the brat had taken down a zombie. The stranger was wearing the protective body armor of the security team members, but the guy didn't have any long-barreled weapons on him. Also, the strange guy didn't smell like a zombie soldier. Reflecting on how a mere human had defeated the boss, Feng Zhang decided that the zombie's counterattack was just a death-defying burst of power. Thus, he was certain that his strike had destroyed the monster's brain. As he looked at the masked man, Zheng thought that since he wasn't dead, he must be a super soldier. As he approached, the hunter told the stranger that he hadn't seen him in the team before and demanded to see his ID. Reaching for the documents taken from one of Fan's soldiers, Zheng spent a level point and forged a passport behind his back. The zombie soldier looked at the first page and found nothing strange, only noticing the ticket number. Realizing that the guy in front of him was probably a new recruit, Feng Zhang asked if the guy was very new to the security team. Hoping that there would be no more questions, Zheng answered in the affirmative. As he approached the soldier, the hunter clapped him on the shoulder and told him not to yawn. If he did, he might be able to take down the boss. After stepping back a bit, Feng Zhang told Zheng that he was incredibly lucky, and today they could ride to the city together in the hunter's luxury car. After getting into a blue SUV, the traveling companions set off towards Dawn City. An advertising banner talked about discounts on cottages overlooking the lake. Sitting in the passenger seat, the hero thought that sneaking into the Fang family's lair was much easier than he thought. Feng Zhang bragged that only the leader could have such a car, and a team member could only get a bicycle. But you can go higher by killing more zombies and completing more tasks. Thinking that this car was many times worse than his Aston Martin GT, Zheng heard that if you got high enough, you could apply to be converted into a zombie soldier. At that moment, the boy realized that it was really good to be a leader. Maybe he too, having raised two more levels, could rise to the top. After a while, the traveling companions pulled up to a huge concrete gate. There were guards in full uniform upstairs, with automatic turrets mounted nearby. Seeing the air defense systems, Zheng wondered if zombies had already learned to fly. Feng Zhang replied that some of them had already learned to swim faster than submarines, and some of them could even dodge bullets. Laughing, he advised the newcomer not to wet himself at the sight of such monsters. They had a marvelous view of the cozy residential neighborhoods. The hunter said that the new recruits had never been to this city. Soon the car pulled into a covered hangar that looked like a military base. After getting out of the SUV, Feng Zong met an acquaintance who asked if the zombie had managed to grate on his nerves. With a wave of his hand, the hunter replied that he had killed the boss with a single blow. After scratching his head, he said that there was no way that could be, because that monster was of the same level as Gloria. He also noted that the zombie woman herself had recently been killed by someone, though no leader of the other team claimed victory over her. Suddenly, a pretty girl with white hair came from the other end of the hangar, asking what kind of guy Feng Zhang had brought along. 
The leader introduced the stranger as Young Jung. He then told the hero that the guy across from him was named Bao Zi and was in charge of logistics, and the girl next to him was named Nan Yue. She, like the squad leader, was a zombie soldier. Feng Zhang then ordered the logistician to take care of settling the newcomer in his new place. At this point, Zhang and his attendant headed towards the exit of the room. Along the way, Bao Zi asked the soldier if he had any connections in the city, or perhaps a personal patron. Looking at the departing rookie, Yue sighed, saying that this handsome rookie was a pity. At the same time, behind Feng Zhang's back, the other team members began to place bets on how long the newcomer would live as a member of the squad. On average, most of them estimated the guy's lifespan at three to seven days. As they walked around Dawn City, Bao Zi gave them a tour. First, they passed by the Fong family's cottages. Then, a multi-story building appeared. It housed the usual team members. According to Bao Zi, it was very crowded and unofficially called pigeon houses. Nevertheless, Zheng noticed that such a building still looked much more decent than the places he had to live in. Laughing, the logistician replied that it was for nothing that the boy fantasized so much, for he had not yet grown to live in such conditions. Turning around, Bao Zi pointed his finger somewhere and said that the newcomer would live there. Looking around, Zheng saw an old, crumbling, thatched cottage. Enraged, he shouted to the logistician to see if it was overkill. Ironic, he thanked the companion for providing the cottage. Baoki replied that the guy didn't seem to know what he had gotten himself into. He then said that on the second day, the new soldiers take part in a selection process in which the survival rate is about 10%. Looking irritated at the new recruit, the logistician ironically muttered that there was nothing wrong with them providing a deluxe townhouse for those with two days to live. As he left, he told Zheng that the gathering was tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. Realizing that the boy didn't even have a watch, Baozi told him to listen to his senses and not to be late, or he would be hunted down and shot. Taking one last look around, the logistician thought that this new guy looked like a coward and probably wouldn't last an hour tomorrow. An excited Zheng flashed his eyes and thought that the situation was getting more and more interesting. The next morning, a group of 20 recruits stood outside a ruined building in the north of the city. In front of them was Feng Zhang. Today, he was the judge for the rookie entrance test. Pointing a finger behind his back, the leader said that today their assignment would be to clear the building of zombies. Each person was assigned one floor. Whoever cleared it and survived would pass the test. Also, the first three to destroy all the zombies will be recommended to the elite fierce zombie extermination squad. The candidates standing behind Zheng laughed that the guy didn't have a gun. They thought that this way, they had one less competitor. The hero, meanwhile, thought that this test was just right for the fan clan. Those without connections would enter the training ground unarmed, and those two behind him brought their rifles with them. Suddenly, the system sent a notification with another task. Three level points were given for completing it. You also had to get rid of the hidden raging zombies in the building. Once the challenge began, many unarmed newbies logically couldn't handle their floors. Those who were unluckier than others, already at the entrance, ran into fierce zombies that left untrained fighters no chance. By the first 30 minutes, seven of the 20 participants had already died. Feng Zhang realized that there were no trained warriors among the new recruits. And the fact that he had surreptitiously sneaked fierce zombies onto the floors only accelerated the process. It looked like everyone except Master Zhang, the boss's protege, would be killed today. Gunshots were heard on one of the upper floors. The guy with the rifle was finally done. He figured the last zombie was probably a raging zombie. Young Don City Master Zhang Ya of the Eternal Water Corporation looked at the camera and replied as he cleared the floor. Looking down the hallway, the guy was upset that all the corpses had vanished and he hadn't had time to count how many he'd killed. Calling Feng Zhang on the radio, the hunter asked if he had gotten to the first place. In response, the team leader replied that it would be better for the guy to go to the floor above. Walking up the stairs, Zhang Ya was surprised that someone was able to overtake him. He had learned beforehand that all of his opponents were weak. In addition, he had to invest his own money to buy equipment. Once on the next floor, the young master wondered what a bunch of newbies were doing here and why they weren't moving anywhere. Zhang Ya asked the nearest guy if they had cleared their floors. He said no, to which the guy with the rifle asked why they were all standing there. Pointing his finger at the open door, the bald rookie replied that it was all because of that guy who killed all the zombies from the next ten floors. Such news left Zhang Ya dumbfounded. In front of him on the mountain of corpses sat the very recruit he and his friend had laughed at before the ordeal began.
the type with the rifle looked at the calm boy in the body armor. By his calculations, this newcomer had killed even a few of the fierce zombies. And considering that the bodies still hadn't dissolved, it turned out that he had killed them all within the last few minutes. But what was most striking was that this intimidating kid did all of this with his bare hands. In a rage, Feng Zhang smashed the monitor through which he was watching one of the floors. Looking from the observation center at Yang Zheng, the leader realized that he was wrong about him. And this kid probably possessed at least a third of Feng Zhang's own strength. But immediately, unwilling to give up, the ringleader ordered the assistant to release an extra, especially the monster. The mysterious creature flew from the side of the forest toward the building. Realizing that something was approaching him from behind the window, Zheng looked to his left. In the sky, he saw a creature that looked like a huge dragonfly. His speed was so great that the lad had no time to react to the danger. Clawing its claws into its victim, the monster broke through the wall and flew into one of the offices. It's a pity that even though you're strong enough to fight zombies, your opponent is the son of the head of one of the three largest corporations in the city, Feng Zhang said with a smile. Looking at the screen, the thug thought that young master Zhang's victory would determine whether or not he would become the head of the team. But as soon as the smoke from the multiple blows cleared, Feng Zhang was immediately stunned by what he saw. He had never encountered anything like this before. In the ruined room, the unusual young fighter fought the elite, noisy zombie on equal footing. With his legs, the boy held the full weight of the monster in his outstretched arms. Tensely looking at this situation, Feng Zhang realized that he had greatly underestimated the newcomer. However, this winged monster still had a trump card. The very next instant, the furious zombie opened its mouth and screamed, emitting high-pitched sounds. The use of this ability caused Zhang to feel a sense of fear and panic. Realizing that he was no longer able to withstand such powerful impulses, the guy withdrew from the fight and quickly ran out into the corridor. At the same time, the creature also retreated, jumping out the window. Such an unusual attack nearly exploded the boy's skull. The hero crouched down and spat out the blood that came up. The system sent a notification that Zhang had lost 40 health points. Wiping his face, the guy thought that dealing with this monster wouldn't be as easy as he expected, even though his strength and speed weren't the best. But it was this particular ability that ruined everything. Hearing a commotion behind him, Zhang turned around. Behind him, the newcomer sat trembling, nervously searching for something in his pocket. In a sweat, the type in a bulletproof vest took out a white container from his pocket. Then he realized why Feng Zhang had told him to take a pair of noise-canceling headphones yesterday. Terrified of remembering this unusual monster, the newcomer didn't notice someone sneaking up on him and attacking unexpectedly. The guy who had recently killed all the zombies on the floors grabbed the white container out of the poor guy's hands. Then he drew his gun and fired upward, apologizing to the fighter for temporarily borrowing his headphones. But before the newcomer could regain his senses, the silhouette of the unknown man suddenly disappeared. Feng Zhang, who was watching the cameras, chuckled, thinking that this kid was trying for nothing because noise-canceling headphones weren't very effective against high frequencies. And up close, his head might just explode from such an attack. But this youngster's speed kept the hunter in awe. It seemed to be as fast as Feng Zhang's own slashing spurt. Meanwhile, a raging zombie was flying around outside the building and watching what was going on inside. Realizing that controlling all the floors just wouldn't work, the monster touched the structure. Immediately, thanks to the ability, he emitted invisible pulses that pierced the entire abandoned structure. It was a kind of X-ray, characteristic of many insect specimens. It allowed the creature to monitor any fluctuations taking place inside. His attention was caught by the silhouette of a man on the roof. He looked very much like the target the monster was trying to kill. Immediately, the monster soared upwards, deciding that it could now take its victim by surprise. Jung, who was standing on top of the forest, heard a strange chattering from the direction of the forest and turned his head. At this moment, a fierce zombie appeared from above and looked at the boy while smiling. Deciding that its target wasn't expecting it, the monster immediately let out a deafening roar, intending to annihilate the enemy. That high-pitched sound caused glass to shatter throughout the building, from the lower to the upper floors. In addition, the load-bearing walls gradually began to collapse throughout the entire area of the structure. The building's supports cracked, crumbling with small concrete debris. Feng Zhang and young Master Zhang looked on from the street. The new recruit looked at the collapsing structure with horror and said that if the leader hadn't saved him, he might have died under the rubble. Looking exhaustedly into the hunter's eyes, 
The boy noted that that strange type could hardly have survived such a nightmare. Feng Zhang confidently agreed with the young master. The zombie soldier pointed out that even if he himself was nearby, he would surely die under this debris. To make sure everything was going according to plan, the hunter looked at his phone. His last means of surveillance remained a quadrocopter hovering in the air not far from the building. From there, Feng Zhang was able to observe his ward, who was calmly flying nearby. There was a pronounced deep dent in the roof at one point. That's where the monster had taken the brunt of the impact. Just then, the hunter exhaled, realizing that this suspicious newcomer had met his death after all. The zombie soldier continued to hover over the murder scene. However, something didn't add up. Where could the victim's body have gone? With these thoughts, the monster heard someone approaching him quickly from behind. The next instant, a gunshot was heard from above, and a powerful shot flew into the creature's head, knocking it off balance. Unable to match the inertia, the furious zombie flew into the roof of the building with great speed. Trying to regain consciousness, the bleeding monster saw a human silhouette moving from the sky towards him. In the next second, Zhang slammed into the monster's body with lightning speed, shattering it into several pieces and ripping its head off. The furious zombie screamed out in despair and surprise. After a second, the boy walked over to the creature's head and placed his foot on it. Looking at the enemy, he realized that beneath the monster's skin was a layer of bulletproof steel. Studying his opponent, the guy said that it was not surprising that bullets of 12 and 7 millimeters caliber could not penetrate it. At these words, the fierce zombie smiled, but immediately the creature saw a much larger caliber cannon in front of it. The frightened monster heard the boy offer to try the weapon. The next instant, a shot from a large caliber sniper rifle was heard. The system notified me that the fierce zombie had been killed and that I had received enhancement points. The hunter and the new recruit who were watching were horrified by what they saw. They couldn't imagine that some little brat would be able to take down such a strong zombie so easily. The enraged Feng Zhang was puzzled as to how this kid was able to dodge the monster's stunning attack. Moreover, this rookie wasn't even injured even though he was within killing radius. Remembering that the brat was wearing large headphones, the hunter wondered if that was it. But that was impossible, because no amount of hearing protection would save him from the direct damage of a flying zombie's attack. Clutching his head, Feng Zhang tried to figure out how this new recruit had gotten headphones in the first place. Terrified, he didn't understand what was going on here. Young Master Zhang looked at the dilapidated building of the testing ground in amazement. At this moment, Zhang suddenly appeared behind his back with a gun in his hand. The sudden appearance of this strange fighter behind him made the recruit shudder. An uneasy shiver ran down his spine. With serious fear, he forced himself to turn and look at the unknown man. Zhang handed the headphones to the owner and said that he had just pumped them up a bit. Now they could reflect almost 90% of the noise in any range. The startled newcomer replied to the boy that he was being too polite, as he had in-canal headphones and that was clearly not his thing. Toward the end of the day, Zhang stood at one of the city's intersections in front of a coffee shop. At some point, someone called out to him from behind. Stepping away from the pole he was leaning on, the boy turned to the source of the sound. Behind his back, slightly nervous, stood Bao Zi. Hesitantly, he pointed his hand at the moped behind him, saying that this was all he had managed to get for Zheng, as their team was too poor. As he approached the newcomer, the logistician held out his phone, saying that as an exception, he would get his own cell phone. In their team, only the captain, his deputy, and Bao Zi could use the phones. Hearing the logistician say that the dormitory keys and pocket money were in the motorcycle, Jung thought that this guy was so pompous just yesterday, and now he was throwing around pleasantries. Getting on the moped, the new recruit asked where the Fang family building was, justifying that it was rumored to be huge and he wanted to see it. Bayoki replied that it was the largest building in the center, surrounded by an open area. But immediately, the logistician warned the guy to stay away from this place because the Fang family might take him as a threat and shoot him without a second thought. These words surprised Zhang. He wondered with interest if there was such a strong level of security there. The logician replied that the city lord Fang Mingbo had died a year ago, and his son Fang Xiao had greatly increased the level of security when he came to power. Having once again heeded Baozi's warnings, the hero went for a ride on his moped. On the way, he thought that this time he should take some resources to pump up. In addition, it would be worth it to know the Fang family's fighting strength, because only by knowing the enemy could they be defeated. Thinking back to the fight with Gloria, Zheng thought that during the fight with that monster girl, he had tried to improve her to get more experience for killing her, but the system prevented him from doing so, 
and all because after reaching the fifth level of the system, killing zombies stopped giving experience. And for the victory over fierce zombies, the amount of experience is greatly reduced. So now it was also necessary to get information about high-level zombies. After these thoughts, the boy thought that this was why he had joined the rebel ranks. At that moment, he was passing through one of Dawn City's many gun stores. But immediately, Zheng abruptly turned back and looked around the trading post with interest. He stared in surprise at the clean sign, trying to realize that there were still stores operating in their lost civilization. Jumping up from his moped, the guy decided it was too good a place to pass up and entered the outlet. Immediately, his gaze fell on an assault rifle, shotgun, and pistol lying on one of the counters. Looking at the numerous cannons, the boy thought that such weapons could not be obtained outside the city. His eyes were going wild. Jung thought that in this paradise for men, he would be able to buy those guns that would help raise his fighting ability to a whole new level. Running up to the cash register, the guy shouted that he wanted all the guns of the largest caliber and ordered that within a minute, all the guns were already on the table in front of him. The salesman across the street looked questioningly at the insolent customer through his glasses. In a minute, the insolent boy was lying on the ground in front of the store. The cashier shouted in anger that the brat was showing off too much, given that he had some pennies in his pocket. Nevertheless, that evil man still at least sold something to Jeng, which the guy was overjoyed about. Looking through the new binoculars and holding the newly purchased rifle, the hero thought that although the silencer would not cancel out the sound completely, it would attract less attention from the enemies when shooting at a distance. With these words, he began to scrutinize the Fang family's main building surrounded by a tall fence. From the elevation, it was clearly visible that this clan had quite a few ground military equipment. In addition to the boy's even greater surprise, there were several versatile combat airplanes on the grounds. On the roof of the building, he also noticed several silhouettes watching the area. After taking a closer look, the guy realized that it was the core of the Fang family's army, namely the zombie soldiers. There were three level six monsters on the roof at the moment. Seeing that these monsters were quite strong, Jung realized that as long as the Fang family had such zombie soldiers in their service, they would continue to rule Dawn City. After studying the situation a bit more, the boy realized there was no turning back and pulled his balaclava over his head. With a single motion, he threw off his body armor. As he prepared for battle, Zheng thought that there was no way he could return empty-handed. With that thought, he took aim and, holding his breath, fired. That shot, however, had another meaning. Thanks to it, the guy was able to accelerate to the speed of a bullet and instantly find himself on the fighter. Putting his hand on the airplane, the boy hoped to unlock it in this way. However, the system informed him that he had to reach level 15 for this fighter. The hero then approached the tank, hoping that it wouldn't require even more pumping to access it. But the system said that to unlock the tank requires level 10. Jung then decided that since he was only two levels short, he only needed to lure a couple zombies to gain experience. At that second, the intruder was spotted by one of the monster soldiers guarding the area. The guy immediately picked up on the fact that he had been exposed. Pulling out an automatic rifle, the hero shot in the other direction. Then he thought, he didn't much want to get beaten up right next to the Fang family's office. The bullet quickly flew outside the fence and headed toward the woods. Immediately, Jung materialized and started running away from the fence by leaps and bounds. But immediately, he realized that he had already been intercepted. Suddenly, a fierce zombie in red armor appeared right in front of the guy's face. The boy barely had time to react to the guard who chopped the intruder's dagger with his first attack. Without getting into a fight, the hero backed away in one big leap. He couldn't have guessed that this monster would be as fast as his shot. Looking at the shattered knife blade, Jung thought that if he saved points one more time, he would surely lose his life. With that thought, he took out a battle staff from his hand. At the same time, he distributed points in his profile, thus improving his stats to level 8. In just a moment, a samurai-like guard rushed to attack the boy. The first blow from above was easily repelled by the guy's top block. Nevertheless, this creature was not very weak. In response, Jung flipped his staff and swung it at the zombie's helmet. A shallow cut immediately formed on the headgear, which, however, did not reach the enemy's head. Immediately afterward, the hero and the Fang family guard began a mutual series of exchanges of punches and attacks. Nevertheless, it seemed that Jung found this fight entertaining. From time to time, he twirled his staff behind his back. At one point, he caught his opponent in a mistake and took advantage of the disposition to deliver a crushing blow to the zombie's jaw. The helmet partially split open, revealing the monster's nasty, creepy face behind it. The creature's glittering eyes reminded Zheng that not too long ago, 
A humanoid zombie had told him that they were modified humans, but this type that the guy just fought with is clearly an ordinary monster, as evidenced by his strange eyes and breathing. With this unpleasant thought, the boy threw his spear with great speed in the direction of the enemy, piercing him through with a single blow. Seeing the notification of killing a zombie soldier, Jung was surprised that they gave quite a lot of experience for this monster. In that instant, two ninth and eighth level guards at once attacked the stranger from behind. The guy sensed danger approaching, and with his right foot, he picked up and tossed the sword of the monster that had fallen to the ground into the air. Just then, he deftly caught the shiny blade with his hand. Raising his weapon above his head, the boy blocked two zombie soldiers' blows at once. Nevertheless, his arm shook violently under the pressure of both opponents. You couldn't see through the balaclava, but Zheng was extremely tense. His fingers even managed to go numb from the onslaught. Fighting back, the boy made a U-turn and faced both guards. The situation was unequal, so Zheng put aside his gentlemanliness and pulled out his gun from his inventory. Seeing this, the first zombie immediately pounced on the guy, attacking with his katana. The boy, however, easily fought back, blocking his opponent's powerful blow with his sword. At the same moment, a second monster jumped at the hero from the side, intending to deliver a killing blow from above. Holding the cold weapon with one hand, Jung picked up the gun, pointed it at the approaching target. A shot rang out, and stunned by the hit, the furious zombie lost its balance, tilting backwards. Doing a somersault, the guard fell on his back. This shot was supposed to help the guy buy time to concentrate on fighting one opponent. Immediately, the monster that remained on its feet threw itself at the boy with renewed vigor. Seeing this, Zheng decided that he needed two hands right now and tossed the gun aside for the time being. Outrunning the furious zombie in speed, the guy grabbed the attacker's leg. After only a moment, he spun the monster's body in midair and drove it into the ground, stunning it with a knee strike to the head. Using the inventory, the boy drew his gun again and brought it to a fighting position. Kneeling on his opponent's back, he pointed the cannon at the creature's head. The shot that rang out calmly pierced through the monster's helmet, leaving it no chance of survival. A notification came next that the monster guardian had been destroyed. One improvement point was also awarded. The system then alerted to receive a new set of steel armor and a zombie soldier's knife. Examining the body of the defeated guard, Jung thought that their uniforms weighed 50 kilograms. Marveling at how these creatures could be so agile, the guy improved his level by two points. Thus, he had a new skill called zombie enslavement. No sooner had the boy thought of testing this ability then immediately the remaining monster attacked him. Zheng miraculously managed to dodge the unexpected sword strike at the last moment. But before the zombie soldier could realize it, two retaliatory swift attacks immediately followed. With unimaginable ease and swiftness, the hero struck his opponent, slashing the latter's arm and throat. However, the monster did not die, and the system warned that it still had 18 health points left. But before Zheng knew it, several more guards appeared in front of him. Zheng's eyes were wide open, and he could see that he had enough points for a long time, so he prepared for another battle. In the next few minutes, dozens of screams and gunshots rang out all around. The glow from the battle was visible even above the trees. Time after time, the system notified him to get new improvement points. Meanwhile, Zheng decided to make one level 9 guard his minion. At that moment, he thought that this monster would be fine for the time being, and then he would swap it out for a stronger creature. Suddenly, the boy felt a very powerful aura present near him. Panicked, he turned around and looked around at the nearby bushes. To his utmost horror, Jung saw a monster in armor standing in front of him. The system notified him that it was a zombie boss named Motorcycle Knight. Examining the enemy, the boy thought that perhaps this creature was riding a motorcycle instead of a horse. But then, suddenly, the zombie started pulling out something long and metallic from behind his back. To the hero's horror, the knight had a huge, large-caliber machine gun ready to fire. It was only then that Jung realized that the motorcycle was what the system called the most dangerous weapon the boss was carrying. At the same instant, Knight opened fire to kill. The machine gun immediately began spewing dozens of bullets in a short period of time. Flying with not the greatest accuracy, they created even more problems for maneuvering. Jung realized that there was an urgent need to retreat and shot towards the Fang family's main office. The bullet reached the parking lot with machinery in the yard almost instantly. Materializing in midair, the guy immediately found himself on the hull of one of the tanks. Having put his hand on the hull of the armored car, the boy decided that this boss he will definitely not defeat, but will be able to capture the tank, in which he can later place the enslaved zombies. After inspecting the fighter jet, Jung thought that even if he used all the points to improve to level 15 and unlock the plane, he wouldn't have enough points to improve and store it. 
A few minutes later, the motorcycle knight reached the Fang family's office building. As he entered the fenced area, he found that one of the tanks was not in place and looked at the resulting void with incomprehension. The boy was walking through the forest away from Fang's residence. The boy thought he had come to Fang's house this time, not even expecting to improve to level 10, get a zombie guard, a tank, and five more points of improvements. At that moment, the system activated a skill that indicated that someone nearby was watching the hero. Pointing his gun at one of the trees, Jung ordered the unknown woman to come out and show herself since he had already smelled her. Nan Yue, the monster girl from Feng Zhang's squad, suddenly appeared in front of him. With a wave of her hand, she cheerfully replied that she expected her new friend to be extremely sensitive and was not mistaken. Moving closer, the guy asked if she was following him, but to which Yue wryly replied that the recruit was very savvy. Realizing that something unforeseen might happen now, Jung nevertheless asked how long the girl had been following him. The zombie soldier leaned over and, asking not to look at her with that judgmental look, replied that she had actually come with good intentions. Looking at Yue incredulously, the boy asked what she meant by those very good intentions. Without a hitch, the female soldier replied that if the boy wanted to, she could help him destroy the Fang family. Waving his hand and making a disgruntled face, Jung sharply replied that he didn't understand what his interlocutor was talking about. Immediately, he asked the girl how she could say such a thing while being a member of the guard. When asked by the guy why bring him into this when you can go and deal with Fang Xiao personally, Yue suddenly replied that she sees Zhang as the hope for the destruction of this clan. Unexpectedly for the boy, the girl called him to a place. Coming to it, the hero asked his companion why she had brought him here. Yue seriously replied that this was where the newcomer would be able to feel all of her hatred for the Fang family. The girl pointed to a gravestone. She said her brother was buried here, and that was the reason for her hatred. Ten years ago, when the outbreak first broke out, the Fang family took control of Don City with their private military company. Soon, their group looted all the nearby settlements. After that, those homeless people who could not survive outside the city were forced to accept the Fang family's conditions. In addition to having to work incredibly hard to feed themselves, they were subjected to zombification experiments. Those who passed the tests were able to become zombie soldiers and start defending the Dawn City outside. Those who did well were promoted and given the opportunity to live in the center of the city in good conditions. Such chosen ones no longer had to constantly think about how to feed themselves and their family or where they would sleep tonight. Interrupting the girl, Zheng asked if this wasn't all good. Yue replied that the Fang family was hiding the worst secret. Because one way or another, everyone who became a monster artificially lost the opportunity to become human again. Her brother Nan Feng had become a zombie soldier five years ago after Fang Xiao became the ruler of the city. Her brother decided to join the Dawn City after they couldn't find a safe haven for a long time. Feng was talented in combat, unafraid of death, and was quickly rising through the ranks and was about to join the guard. However, on one of the missions, the unexpected happened. By that point, the guy was uninjured and feeling great as he suddenly started coughing up blood. After a few seconds, his face turned blue, his eyes twitched, and the blood vessels all over his body turned bright green. The transformation into a monster happened in a very short period of time, literally within a minute. His body began to break and tear into pieces. Everything around him was splattered with blood. Then it was clear that something irreversible had happened. Eventually, the sister got word that her brother had gone berserk and attacked the people on the mission. The partners had no choice but to kill the guy and give the girl his tokens. Clenching her shaking fists, Yue said that she wasn't even given her brother's ashes, so only his medallions had to be buried. At this moment, Jung activated his X-ray vision to check the honesty of the girl's claims. Indeed, under the gravestone rested a metal soldier's badge. Taking a closer look, the guy could see that the locket belonged to Nan Feng. However, something wasn't adding up. All tokens usually come in pairs, and here there was only one lying around. This meant that the second one was left on the body. But if Nan Feng was killed, the body would decompose quickly, and the other token would remain in a pile of ashes. At that moment, the guy suddenly had a hunch that answered the question of what had actually become of Nan Feng. However, Yue pulled him away from his thoughts. As she approached the grave, she said that she had been investigating all these years and found out what the Fang family was hiding. Every zombie, while self-medicating or using abilities, is exposed to corpse poison. When the number of DA is exceeded, the soldier turns into a full-fledged monster. 
There is not a shred of humanity left in this new shell. The Fang family somehow controls zombie soldiers who have become full-fledged monsters, turning them into pure killing machines. Therefore, if such a zombie wants to rebel against the Fang clan, it will find itself in a closed loop. Grabbing the tombstone with her hand and crushing it from nerves, the girl said that the more you resist, the easier it is to turn into a monster. If you become a full-fledged zombie, the Fang family has unlimited control over you. After listening to his interlocutor, Jung asked why she thought he was the hope of destroying this cursed clan. Yue replied that she's been watching him since the boy took the exam. And even if she doesn't know how the boy becomes stronger, time after time, one thing is clear, he is not a monster. Therefore, only he can break the vicious circle of death of zombie soldiers. Those words had a profound effect on the guy. At that moment, he really felt special. Meanwhile, the girl with violet eyes looked down at the forest from her skyscraper. She grinned at the nasty people trying to kill her every day. It was the ruler of Dawn City, Fang Xiao. Riley, she asked if these bastards thought that she was always in this huge target-like building. An aide standing behind her asked the ruler who she wanted to send to investigate yesterday's incident. After a moment's thought, the ruler replied that Olsen should do it. After a moment's hesitation, the suit-clad man explained that the huntress couldn't do the job right now as she had gone to defend the city gates. Rumor had it that there was a very violent zombie boss. At the end, the aide added that the city had temporarily declared an A-alert level. This news horrified Xiao. Meanwhile, at the North City Gate, an automatic turret kept up a steady stream of fire, shelling the fast-moving object. Thanks to its incredible rate of fire, the gun fired a hail of bullets in a short period of time, but it was as if they did no damage to the creature at all. All because this monster was a huge zombie boss in the form of a long red worm that maneuvered from firing underground. Suddenly, the turret that had been firing non-stop stopped, stopping to shower the monster with a hail of bullets. The military men guarding the walls shrieked in horror, asking each other the reason for the machine gun's failure. One of the operators anxiously reported that the maximum angle of the gun barrel had been exceeded. One of the senior officers reported to Feng Zhan that there was a problem with the turret. The hunter replied that this gun was not designed to shoot at a ground target, and therefore it was useless for defense against this boss. Drawing his sword, the deputy commander of the 10th Guards branch asked that the matter be left to him to decide. With the end of the shelling, the monster finally burrowed underground and was rapidly approaching the wall of Dawn City. The soldier standing on top shouted to the commander that this zombie was getting closer and closer to the wall through the ground. Nervously, the officer ordered his underlings to put the panic aside, as this boss was about to be blown up by a mine. A moment later, just as the fighter had predicted, there was a massive explosion not far from the city wall. The monster's spine had caught the trap, and the mine had disoriented the monster. Only a few seconds later, the long red torso of the bloodworm, a level A zombie puppet, appeared out of the cloud of dust and rocks. But as soon as the creature gave itself away and revealed itself, someone immediately swept by it at lightning speed, cutting through space with his blade. That person was Feng Jiang. With one swift and confident strike, he sliced the monster in two in the middle. Turning around, the hunter saw the creature's carcass slumped heavily to the ground. Looking at the sprawled remains of the zombie boss, Fen Chajin thought that as long as he continued to accomplish feats like today's, the position of squad leader wouldn't slip away from him. Some of the people standing upstairs were amazed at the speed and strength of this soldier. Few could kill such a monster with a single blow. The anti-aircraft gun commander nearby marveled at the special skill Feng Zhan had applied. He had heard earlier that this hunter's father was a butcher. According to common legend, Feng Zhang often saw his dad clearly cut pieces of meat in half. In the future, after becoming a zombie soldier, the hunter developed his own skills based on what he saw as a child. However, it was worth thinking about it, as the zombie boss that had been chopped in half suddenly began to splice together. This state of affairs put Feng Zhan in a stupor. He had never encountered anything like this before. Nevertheless, Boev still decided to act. Grasping his sword with his hand, he blew the steam from his mask, preparing to strike his opponent again. Deciding to use the effect of surprise, the guy rushed at the monster and sliced it in half again, but along its entire body. A perfect cut was made all around the body, exposing all of Bloodworm's insides. The people on the wall watched in horror as the monumental carcass of the creature billowed steam. One of the soldiers said in horror that he had never seen such a ferocious monster before. 
One of the officers replied that the recruit had not been guarding the city for a long time and his fear was normal. Nervously looking at the monster, the old-timer said that this species is called a zombie puppet, as it usually comes from the transformation of high-ranking monsters. But this was the first time even the officer had seen such a fast self-healing. Standing at the bottom, Feng Zhang, who was trying to catch his breath, lamented that he had no idea where this monster's core was. But deciding he had plenty of time while the boss was chopped up, the hunter soared into the sky and shouted that one way or another, he would get to the creature's heart. However, Feng Zhang was so confident in his dominance in this battle for nothing. A moment later, the worm's mouth was suddenly near the hunter's head. In the moment before the blow, the guy thought that the other half of the monster just couldn't have grown that fast. With a lightning-fast attack, the zombie pierced through Feng Zhang's body, tearing off his arm and leg. The creature's body had almost fully recovered by then. Thrusting back its tail, the huge worm approached the wall, raising its maw level with the city guards. Panic settled in the ranks of the military. Their best fighter had just been summarily defeated, and they might soon suffer the same fate. However, to everyone's surprise, the zombie boss didn't bother touching any of the humans. Instead, it pounced furiously on the turrets, breaking them and devouring them completely. Only then did one of the officers commanding the anti-aircraft gun crew realize that the main target of this worm was directly the machine gun turrets. Only after climbing the wall did the monster begin to make its way along it, breaking everything in its path. From machine gun to machine gun, the creature made its way straight into the depths of the enemy's defenses. Thus, in a matter of seconds, the zombie boss destroyed all but one of the phalanx's systems. There was only one gun left in the worm's path, which the recruit with the shotgun was desperately trying to cover. Determined to stay put, this young man felt that the loss of the last gun could turn into a collapse. Without feeling the shots, the creature slowly and majestically rose high above the fighter and was ready to unleash its full power on the last line of defense. Seeing the multimeter torso of a giant zombie above him, the young guard cried and began to call for help. But the same, suddenly, the carcass of a huge monster was chopped by someone else in one blow. The guy near the turret watched in horror and bewilderment as the huge worm was cut in one fell swoop by someone with a fire axe. What was most incredible, however, was how large this weapon was. It was larger than any axe a man could theoretically create. The military man turned around in horror, looking for the source of where this attack could have come from. A tall girl stood behind him. Judging by the pose she was in, she was the author of this gorgeous throw. Panting and walking over to the recruit standing next to her, 10th Guard Squad Leader Olsen asked the kid to give her a shotgun. At this time, the worm once again managed to coalesce and shouted into the sky in rage. But immediately, two shots landed on his huge body from below without doing any significant damage. The boss looked back and looked at Olsen. So the girl distracted the creature from the remaining air defense turret. Not far from there, the surviving fighters were hiding behind a wall. One of them asked why they were hiding here. The other replied that the commander had ordered them to get out of the line of fire as soon as possible, so as not to catch a stray bullet. Peeking out from around the corner, one of the soldiers looked at Olsen and noted that shotguns were useless against the bloodworm, and in this case, they should stick to aviation. At that moment, the zombie boss hovered menacingly over the lone girl with shotgun in hand. Nevertheless, the latter smilingly remarked that the monster had bought the distraction. The creature swiftly attacked the lone warrior, but she deftly jumped aside, and the zombie's blow didn't hit her. Still holding the shotgun in her hands, the girl swiped her hand across the weapon, and it was instantly engulfed in yellow energy. In the next second, the shotgun was already several dozen times larger. It was so large that the barrel was as big as the bloodworm's own mouth. Not to lose the surprise effect of the unusual transformation, the girl grabbed her weapon, preparing to take the creature down. Olsen strained her arm with the last of her strength and still managed to pull the trigger. There was a barely perceptible click, and a huge pillar of fire accompanied by dozens of small pellets burst from the barrel of the shotgun. In the next instant, the worm's head was literally torn into atoms and molecules. Immediately upon hitting, the shot shrank to its usual few centimeters. The incredible recoil, which there was no one to extinguish, sent the shotgun flying backward. But after another moment, the weapon shrank several times its former familiar size and fell to the passageway along the wall. The fighters who came out of hiding could not believe their eyes. In front of them, the body of a Class A monster was practically vaporized before their eyes. Both recruits were shocked by what had happened. When they saw the holes in the floor, one of them assumed that the shotgun had been fired from a huge shotgun. At this moment, Feng Zhang appeared behind Olsen's back. 
Turning around, the girl asked her rival if he was awake and if he was injured by that zombie. The deputy squad leader was furious. Could it be that while he was regenerating, the zombie had already escaped? Seeing the blood and fumes around, Feng Zhang realized that Boss Oud had been killed by this girl. Angry, he thought that Olsen had once again robbed him of his fighting glory. Meanwhile, the girl's cell phone vibrated. Sticking her hand in the pocket of her back pants, the girl answered the phone. At this time, Feng Zhang threatened the girl like a pesky fly, saying that he would soon take her place. At the same moment, without a word, Olsen simply vanished. Realizing that she had run off on her own again, the boy sadly told her that she was an arrogant woman. Meanwhile, events were already unfolding in the Fang family building, on one of the floors dealing with security. In one of the rooms, suddenly there was swearing. A woman didn't understand where all the CCTV footage from the day had gone. Standing next to one of the system administrators, Olsen listened as the girl next to her said that this night the cameras that had captured the intruder had suddenly disappeared. Among the remaining files, there was only one that indirectly indicated the presence of a suspect. One of the photos showed an unidentified man wearing a balaclava. Meanwhile, Yang Zheng had already reached the 14th level in the Doomsday system. That day, he made his way out of the city's territory and immediately got into a mess. In one of the forest thickets, he was surrounded on all sides by huge lionesses. Surprised by their size, he thought that they were the puppets that Nan Yue was talking about. At once, one of the animals pounced on the boy, intending to tear him to shreds. However, Jung had already calculated the possible counterattacks and had already intended to respond with a lightning strike. But at the same second, he was overtaken. The tamed nine-level zombie slit the creature's throat in a second. Realizing that he could now trust such tasks to his assistants, the guy turned around and, leaving, ordered the slave to finish off the remaining puppets. Shooting toward the woods, the boy went off on another errand. Seeing a suitable tree, he materialized and landed on one of its wide branches. Immediately, he was reminded of a conversation from five hours ago. Back then, Yue had said that she had managed to get the riot squad to postpone the report on Jung, and for the time being, he could act relatively calmly. At that time, the guy also asked how the Fang family's battle rankings were organized. The girl replied that there are S, A, B, C, D, E ranks, each of which is subdivided into three smaller subclasses, such as S+, and S, and so on. At that moment, the boy thought the ranking was a bit more detailed than he had realized. In this case, creatures with the same rank could differ greatly in strength. Zheng then asked what Feng Zhan's rank was. Yue replied that the commander's strength ranged from D plus to B, and he often went between those ranks but could not make more progress. On the other hand, you need to strictly control the zombification time, otherwise it's easy to turn into a regular zombie. Of all the squads, including the guard and resource teams, Olsen has the highest rank, A+, and her zombification level is unknown. She has such a strong resistance to corpse poison that even the research center couldn't calculate where her limit is. Jung clarified if Olsen was the strongest person in Dawn City. Yue replied that the woman was one of the three strongest of the ten. But there was no more specific information about people even stronger. So this time, you'll go fight zombies. It'll be your test of strength, Nan Yu spoke out with a smile at the end. Now the lad stood at the top of the tree and wondered if the test of strength would be as uncomplicated as those three lionesses in the forest. But all his doubts were dispelled by a deep pit, the bottom of which was not visible at all. Almost without thinking, the boy jumped into it. This cave was not so deep inside. However, the distances that opened up around it were staggering. Only sparse stone pillars kept the place from collapsing. Suddenly, from the depths of the corridors, came a steady, methodical sound that resembled some uncomplicated rhythm. Listening to this, Jung thought that this noise was like a drum kit. Walking a bit deeper into the cave, the guy came across piles of human skulls, chaotically scattered in separate groups. To the boy's even greater surprise, there was indeed a shiny red drum station underground. Behind it sat a zombie in pants and red horns. Instead of wooden drumsticks, he used whitewashed human bones. Standing up from his chair and smiling, the rock and roll zombie of unknown level asked if the stranger had come to hear his recital. Zheng became a little nervous. This monster was also able to speak, just like that athlete named Gloria. Without flinching a muscle in his face, the boy snatched up his automatic rifle and shouted that he was not here for a concert, but for the zombie's head. A shot rang out. Immediately, however, the creature struck the drums with its bones. 
The momentum released caused Zheng to fall into unknown memories. He stood silently looking at the stage where some rock band was playing. All the girls he had met so far were screaming with happiness beside him. Excitedly, the boy thought it was an illusion, showing the day he missed the concert ten years ago. The next instant, someone grabbed the guy's arm tightly. To Zheng's surprise, Nian Yue was standing next to him. Cheering up the hero, she said that he was very tense, and it was already time for them to relax. On the stage sat a suspicious type with red horns and masterfully played the drum part of one of the boy's favorite songs. At the same time, in reality, the boy's body remained motionless. Being inside his illusions, Jung finally couldn't stand it. Throwing his hands high up, he shouted that now was the time to party and forget about some apocalypse. The boy was very plastically churning out various movements, having a blast. At the same time, beside him, Zhao Qi continued to move beside him, bleeding with sweat from the last of her strength. The huge crowd of people, listening to the constant pulses emitted by the drum kit on stage, continued to dance. Zheng's legs couldn't stop. He repeatedly beat out motifs he didn't know before and couldn't count how many hours he had been moving. His whole body was on fire. The guy was very exhausted, but as soon as he heard the drum beat again, his body itself began to move in a continuous dance. But then it hit him. Perhaps headphones would help with the euphoria. Just then, the boy pulled out of his inventory the very headphones he'd killed the flying zombie soldier with. Still moving and shaking with fatigue, Jung pulled the headphones over his head with shaky hands, hoping that this nightmare would stop. But then a new, even more powerful percussive pulse from the monster's drum kit was heard. Throwing the headphones out of his hands, the guy stood on his hands and started dancing upside down. Sweat was pouring down from the hero. His face turned blue and his arms and legs gradually refused to obey. The thought flashed through his mind that it would be foolish to die at the dance. Suddenly, there was what seemed like silence. Jung hung limply in the air, his hand reaching for his headphones. Losing strength, he realized that he could get out of here alive if he didn't somehow manage to drown out the rhythm of the drums. But with each passing moment, his hand grew weaker and weaker, and his eyes began to close of their own accord from fatigue. Suddenly, a suspiciously familiar female hand picked up the headphones herself. Opposite the desperate boy stood a perfectly healthy Gloria. She noted ironically that when the boy had fought her, he'd been much more energetic and alive. With disdain, he asked why Zheng looked like his kidneys had failed a few days ago. Had he really plowed so hard to have such a tired look? In response, the hero jumped up and embarrassedly said that he had fallen into the illusion of the void and was dancing almost to death. Putting the headphones to the boy's head, Gloria replied that the boy should conserve his strength. But before he took revenge, he should help the girl, even though it might be difficult. In the same instant that the headphones were on Zheng's head, the illusion around him collapsed. Gloria went into the darkness along with it. The zombie rocker stood in front of the kid's motionless body. Bending over his victim, he was drooling from the anticipation of eating the delicious food and was ready to grab the boy's throat. But in the next second, Something cold and metallic pressed against the creature's chin. Leaning on his elbow, Jung pulled out his pistol and pointed it at the monster's head and fired once. The heavy body of a rocker with a shot head fell on his back. The boy sat next to him, horrified by what had happened. Looking at the body of the hapless human hunter, the hero thought that he was saved by Gloria, and the tendon he received after her death really does have a remnant of the girl's consciousness in it. But then a squelching sound was heard nearby. Jung realized that this was obviously not a pleasant omen. Looking back, the guy saw the exact same zombie rocker emerge from the ground as if from water. The boy wondered in horror how such a thing was even possible. After all, even the bone sticks in his irks were identical to those held by the demon he had just killed. Jeng praised his opponent for having so many skills, thinking to himself over whether it was a zombie or just his clone. The boss was near the drum kit in one leap and swung his sticks, about to strike. As his hand came down, the instrument emitted a deafening hum, which flowed into a pulse wave that shattered the rock formations around it. As a result of this sound wave, some passageways to the far corners of the cave were obstructed. A gray suspension rose up all over the area, forming a mist of dust. The beast thought it had easily eliminated the intrusive human. A moment later, however, there was no limit to his surprise. From behind him, a third member stealthily approached him and with a single blow, pierced through the demon standing behind him. Out of the last of his strength, the zombie rocker turned around and looked to see who had attacked him stealthily. But no sooner had the demon studied the unknown than the guard's blade cut the creature's body in two perfectly. Immediately after completing the task, Jung's puppet bounced back a few meters. 
The hero himself managed to hide behind one of the stone columns in time. Peeking out from behind cover, the guy realized that despite the headphones having almost 100% noise cancellation, it was possible to hear the sound of drums. Thinking that this boss would still be the one using clones, Jung turned on his X-ray vision to find the very source of the danger. All around the perimeter of the cave, he saw a dozen clones buried in the ground. But so far, he couldn't figure out which one was in charge. But suddenly, on one of the plots, the guy saw a silhouette that differed from the others by its pronounced spine. It must have been the main monster. Just then, the boy shouted for his tamed zombie to deal with the clones while the hero himself took care of the boss. But as soon as the boy said this, an incomprehensible shadow jumped down from somewhere above. The creature moved so fast that even the experienced Jeng couldn't keep up with it. On the run, he began to straighten out the guy's tamed monster. The next second, the throw of something heavy was heard from the darkness. At the boy's feet flew the head of his guard. This unexpected surprise revealed the true nature of the monster that dwelt here. Just then, the same monster appeared not far from Jeng. But this time, he was clearly more determined. Suddenly, a corpse odor enveloped the boy's face. It immediately threw him into a shiver. This clone's breath was completely different from the past. A recent conversation with Nan Yue came to mind. The girl answered the questions about the level of the boss that it was already a type that even Olsen would be afraid to approach. A little nervous, Zheng said that the assignment Olsen was offering him was pure suicide. But looking at the enemy boy, finally realized that Nan Yue wasn't lying. Immediately, the boy spent points to raise his level to the 20th level. Only then did he still have a chance to win. As soon as the guy improved his characteristics, the monster instantly launched an attack. He swung with his left hand, shortening the distance rapidly. However, Jeng dodged in time and the zombie rocker's punch hit the ground. The boy decided to play for distance and, jumping farther away from the monster, drew his rifle and fired a burst of fire at the enemy. In turn, the creature decided to go into close combat again and covering himself with his hands, ran towards the kid. Realizing that simple jumping would not win, Jeng decided to cheat. He shot past the target, then teleported behind the monster's back and grabbed his sniper rifle. Retaining the benefit of the surprise effect, the boy fired several aimed shots at the disoriented enemy. However, the bullets did not inflict a scratch on the creature and exploded close to the target. Jung, tired of mind games, nervously tried to figure out how he could not hit if he was aiming straight for the brain. But suddenly from the right, the lad heard the fall of something heavy. The next second, he realized that the monster was trying to confuse him with such extraneous sounds. The zombie must have realized that even if the noise was only 10%, the boy would become distracted and lose his guard. Zhang frantically tried to concentrate on his opponent. Right now, even the most common distraction of extraneous noise was making his shooting less accurate. This monster definitely knew how to exploit the weaknesses of his opponents. Perhaps that was why no one in the Fang family would try to mess with him. Suddenly, the zombie snapped out of his seat and went into melee range again. Even though he tried to be more attentive, the guy didn't keep up with his opponent's speed and was forced to retreat without engaging. Jung's gaze now focused solely on his enemy's arms and legs to try and anticipate his movements. Suddenly, the creature snapped its fingers. The momentum from that sound instantly rippled through the cave. Despite his all-out attempts to concentrate, Jung was still unable to distract himself from this hypnotizing technique. A moment later, the boy who had been stunned for a second was punched in the chest with all his might by a zombie rocker. With great speed, the guy's body flew off to the other side of the cave and slammed into a pile of rocks. Through force, Jung got down on his knee. He thought he was about to dodge, but a strange sound interrupted him. His rifle and headphones also broke at once from the impact. Looking at the approaching zombie rocker, the boy realized that he still couldn't see the creature's level. His mind was spinning with thoughts about the broken equipment and the feasibility of improving skill points at the expense of enhancement points. He should have put all these thoughts away first, otherwise there might be no chance of winning. But suddenly, a great idea occurred to him. He looked at a pair of his broken headphones and thought of a way to use them. But just when Zheng thought about it, a zombie that came close attacked the guy again. Not without difficulty, the hero managed to miraculously dodge the first powerful blow. But the monster made that strange sound again, and the boy was also stunned. The monster gladly took advantage of this and sent Jung backwards into the rock with a kick of his foot. Not wanting to stop, the zombie rocker flew towards the dust cloud to find and finish off the enemy. Suddenly, among the puffs of smoke, the creature finally spotted a dark silhouette. To gain an advantage, the monster moved closer and clapped his hands, hoping to disorient his opponent. 
but the silhouette after that suddenly began to approach, causing the zombie to have some questions. Running up to the monster, Jung charged at the monster's jaw with all his might with his fist. However, the forces were so unequal that the guy sent the zombie rocker upward with one blow, smashing the creature's body against the rocks. Looking at the result of his work, the boy realized that if you hit your opponent when he wasn't screaming, at the 20th level, the punch was much better. The monster, still embedded in the ceiling, asked why his noise wasn't working anymore. And it was all about the guy's rifle, in which he'd combined broken headphones and a silencer, getting a silent silencer that allowed him to block incoming and outgoing sounds within a two-meter radius. Looking at the zombies, Zheng realized why those important bigwigs that Nan Yue was talking about didn't come here. Without soundproofing like his, it would be impossible to fight without it. Immediately, the monster jumped off the roof and pounced on the boy with renewed vigor. But this time, no amount of clicking and popping could disorient the guy anymore and had to come up with new ways to attack. However, the zombie rocker failed to keep the initiative in the fight on his side, and a few seconds later, he received another fist to the face. Trying to stay on his feet, the monster tried to block multiple attacks from the guy, but it was doing very poorly. After a few confident attacks, the guy suddenly turned off his jammer ability so as not to waste energy and delivered one powerful blow to his opponent's head. This attack was so powerful that the mutant's body flew across the entire cave. It even seemed to have traveled at the speed of sound. A huge cloud of dust rose into the air from the impact with the wall at the opposite end of the cave. The system sent a notification that the boss of the first phase had just been defeated. Looking at the bonus points received, the guy was surprised that it wasn't the end of the battle. With these thoughts, he looked out into the pile of rocks, activating his silencer just in case. For a second, Zheng thought that if the system gave him rewards for half the battle, then perhaps it was afraid that the player would die. At the same moment, a monster crawled out from under the rubble. All of his arms and legs were once again making many different distracting noises. Zheng gingerly looked at the zombie's body emitting pulses. He didn't understand what the monster wanted to do if he already knew that noise illusions didn't work against the guy during battle. Suddenly, the monster struck out with its hands, emitting an aura of green energy. This action caused Zheng to shiver. Then he realized that there was every chance of dying today. At that moment, the guy decided that it was no longer possible to save points. He used all available points to increase his level to 26. The creature opposite at that moment no longer had two eyes but four. Sharp red blades grew from the back of his hands. A flustered Jung thought that this monster's zombification skills weren't working guy, so the rocker decided to use it on himself. Apparently, it works like a buff that instantly increases physical strength. Indeed, it felt as if all of the enemy's muscles had increased several times. His aura became much more sinister than it had been during the first fight. In the same second, the monster across the street just vanished somewhere. While the hero was trying to figure out where the enemy had gone, the zombie had already crept up from behind. Zheng was too late to notice the approaching danger, so he didn't have time to react properly. As a result, the monster used the edge of its blades to graze the boy's cheek. At this point, the system will send a notification that the hero is infected with poison, and when the infection scale fills up, the player will die. Improvement points can act as an antidote. The boy thought grudgingly that was the beauty of leveling up. You never know when you'll need treatment. But at least now the system was displaying the level of this monster. In front of him was a level 35 rock and roll zombie. The level gap, on the other hand, wasn't that big. However, the new creature's technique was truly on a new level. The speed and number of attacks made it impossible to keep track of them all at once, so we had to rely on luck. After realizing this, Jung decided to increase the distance and prevent the enemy from taking advantage of the melee attacks. With that thought, the guy shot out to the side to dodge away in the form of a bullet. However, this was also noticed by the monster who had anticipated this feature. After the shot was fired, the zombie rocker snapped out of his seat and sprinted after him. Moving with unimaginable speed, he managed to catch up with the flying bullet and intercepted it with his claws. Zheng also materialized in the same place, instantly trying to deflect his opponent's preemptive strikes. However, the monster still hit the kid and sent him flying into the wall. Dozens of small cobblestones scattered in different directions from the guy's impact with the rock. After the cloud of dust cleared, it became apparent that the boy was lying on the ground, writhing in pain. Blood spurted from his mouth. Meanwhile, the poison scale was slowly filling up, with just over half of his health left. Immediately, Jung realized that this type not only noticed the flash when he transformed, 
but also managed to move faster than the speed of a bullet. And his newly acquired skills seemed to make life even more difficult. Now the guys decided to change tactics. If he can't keep his distance, he's going to have to be tougher right here in the melee. Deciding to try and take the initiative, Jung counterattacked his opponent, hitting him with multiple blows time after time. However, the new boss didn't care about such fist blows. Not one or even two blows could penetrate his skull. Besides, I had to finish before the poison scale filled up. But how could I do that if no gun could do any damage to this big guy? Meanwhile, no melee weapons could do any significant damage either. At that moment, Zheng thought that he didn't come this far to just take the poison and die here. Trying to think of some way out of the situation, the guy remembered Gloria's tendon. This artifact is used to cast in conjunction with the Thunderfire Spear. But what happens if you redirect the power and use it in close combat? While fending off the zombie rocker's endless attacks, Zheng thought that after activating the tendon, he only had one chance for a successful attack due to this artifact's cooldown. At that moment, the hero decided that he would use his fist instead of the Thunder Spear. It was risky, but the situation could not wait, and there was no time to think. Gathering his last strength for the final attack, Jung struck a crushing blow to the monster's jaw with all his might. From such a powerful hit, the fierce zombie rocker's skull was instantly deformed. Jung left no chance for the enemy to survive. The creature's body flew off to the other end of the hall with rumbles and explosions, ending this long fight. Looking at the monster's broken off feet, the guy heard the system's notification of victory over the enemy, the reward for which was 10 improvement points. But in the next instant, the boy's heart shook violently. His eyes darkened, his head began to spin. Showering himself with sweat, the boy looked at the glistening vessels on his body and realized he needed to improve and get rid of the debuff sooner rather than later. In the next few seconds, the guy distributed improvement points, causing the light from the pit to even seep out. Thus, he reached a new 35th level, eliminating the poison poisoning at the same time. Exiting the cave and heading back, Zheng read about the new abilities. For example, an energy scale was now added for him, allowing him to fire a 30-round magazine more accurately. Also among the innovations was the zombie core, a sphere that, when activated, could temporarily control a low-ranking zombie. Looking at the orange orb, the guy thought it was clearly worth it. As he approached the Dawn City, the boy heard the uncharacteristic endless gunfire. He looked into the distance and was horrified. There were massive fires in most parts of the city. Black smoke covered the sky. There were screams all around. A large caliber anti-aircraft gun on one of the rooftops was desperately pouring fire on the creature advancing from the sky. The gun commander was desperately trying to impress upon his superiors the idea that the old guns could not defend the city. After all the phalanx were destroyed by zombie marionettes and the Fang family's fighters were out of action, the officers on the front lines urgently requested the support of high-level zombie soldiers. Flying among the high-rise buildings between puffs of smoke, the strange creature spotted two anti-aircraft guns on the roof of an undamaged dormitory. In the next instant, the winged mutant began to dive at the gun, which was mercilessly firing at the monster with direct fire. The creature's face was remotely like a dragon's. A bluish fire spurted from its nostrils. The huge bone dragon, regardless of the endless firing, descended sharply towards the enemy. The officer standing next to the gun ordered the soldier to put aside panic and shoot down the flying object with aimed fire. At the same time, a thought flashed through the gunner's mind. Why would he risk his life like that with a salary of 1,000 yuan a month? At first, the soldier thought that serving in air defense was easy, as no one imagined that the city would one day be attacked by such powerful creatures. And now, it was the end of them all. But just when the anti-aircraft gunner thought about it, a zombie soldier armed with a huge hammer descended upon the dragon. With one blow, he knocked the flying monster off course and blew it up. The zombie probably died instantly after that attack. That bully was magnificent. He had already saved Dawn City from many calamities many times before. When asked by the anti-aircraft gunner who was in front of them, the gun commander replied that they were the elite of the riot squad. This macho man has come out victorious in every fight against zombies to this day, and is also one of the top ten fighters in the city. His name is Bao Shan, better known as Double Strike. The military men hugged each other and rejoiced that they were saved. But suddenly something flew past the satisfied anti-aircraft gunners and, like lightning, wounded someone, splattering blood across the roof. When the gun commander took a closer look, he was horrified to find that the legendary Bao Shan, a fighter who had never lost a battle, had been cut in half. 
Nearby, on the same roof, the dragon that Double Strike had recently knocked out in front of everyone's eyes also landed. Bao Shan didn't realize what had happened at first. He couldn't imagine that some bony lizard could do this to him. He was already going to move from B-plus rank to A rank tomorrow. The realization that he had been mauled by some bald gargoyle caused Double Strike to burst into a storm of indignation. He screamed, and a yellow aura began to gather around him. There was a bright flash, accompanied by a shockwave and a powerful release of energy streams. Bao Shan himself stood in the center of the explosion. Glaring suddenly with his whole body, the hunter shouted furiously that he couldn't believe he had to transform because of some stinking lizard. In this way, Bao Shan had entered the super phase. His skin color changed, his muscles enlarged, and his hands were encased in metal gloves. However, despite the appearance, the hunter used the increase in zombification level to 99%. Although he wouldn't turn into a true zombie, maintaining such a level was a difficult task even for him. Rushing out of his seat, Sean ran around the dragon, and coming in from the rear, grabbed the reptile by the tail. As soon as the creature turned around, the hunter had already changed position. Once at the side of the zombie's face, Double Impact yelled that he didn't mind having some more fun. But since he had things to do, he'd have to send the dragon back to hell. Approaching at speed, Bao Shan smashed the monster's skull with a powerful punch. Loading the shot with his other hand, the hunter prepared to use his crowning trick. The dragon that was tossed by the first shot was shot at by Bao Shan with a cannon built into his arm, causing a colossal explosion in the air above the apartment building. Looking satisfied with the result of his work, Double Strike reloaded the gloved weapon. The huge carcass of the reptile that was bleeding out fell down involuntarily. After watching the monster's body fall and making sure it didn't move, Sean summarized that this blow had definitely shattered the dragon's head to pieces. Still standing on the roof, the anti-aircraft gunners saluted their hero, shouting that blowing up zombies right out of your gloves was cool. The gun commander glared at the steel lats, mouthing that he'd heard that the power of the blast could be seriously increased by pouring zombie energy into it. The gunner said cheerfully that with such a strong man around, he could chill out in peace. But suddenly, a bluish light suddenly appeared behind Bao Shan's back. A shiver ran down the hunter's spine. When he saw the energy blobs flying out from behind him, he turned around and couldn't believe his eyes. A moment later, the brightest stream of blue fire burst into the cover of the building, burning through everything. The dragon, which turned out to be alive, stood on the other side of the street and emitted the brightest stream of energy towards the residential structure. This attack annihilated part of the roof of the building. From that second on, the skyscraper could collapse at any moment. But the most terrifying thing was that the attack left only his head from Bao Shan's body. Stunned, looking up into the sky, the hunter thought that now he was definitely finished. Since the zombification level was 99%, further treatment would be impossible. Looking up into the sky, Bao Shan saw a creature approaching. Terrified, he tried to understand how this monster's head was still on his shoulders. Abandoning all hope of survival, the hunter realized that he was probably here to stay forever. But in the next second, the soldier thought that it was better to be burned than to turn into a zombie and stand against his people. If it was time to die, it was time to admit and accept defeat. Suddenly, the silence over the city was dispelled by the rumble of a sound barrier being passed. The dragon looked in the direction of the unusual sound in surprise. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw something approaching him with great speed. The object was moving incredibly fast. In the next instant, it was behind the monster's back. This impetuous stranger turned out to be Jung who had come to the rescue. The next instant, the blade of a retrieved blade gleamed in his hands. The reptile had no time to turn around and defend itself from the approaching danger. With incredible speed, it chopped the dragons into pieces. In the blink of an eye, the monster was reduced to shreds of flesh. The system notified that the monster had been defeated and a new artifact had been obtained. Bao Shan looked on in horror at what had happened. He couldn't believe that this boy was able to defeat this creature so quickly. The anti-aircraft gun commander standing to the side, gaping, realized that he had never seen anyone stronger than this hero before. Zheng landed next to a lying human head. Looking at the broken sword, the guy complained that this weapon couldn't withstand a quick attack at all, and it would need to be changed. Suddenly, someone called out to the boy. The boy looked nervously in the direction the sound was coming from. Horrified, he discovered a head lying nearby. Zheng asked why the man was still alive, to which the unknown man replied that he was a zombie soldier and his blood was thick, which would allow him to last for a while longer. 
Faced with such a situation for the first time, the hero offered the stranger to take him to a hospital where he could cure himself. Looking at the sky, Sean replied that it was not worth doing so. From his explanation, self-healing beyond the body was useless for a zombie soldier, and he would no longer survive to the hospital. Looking at the boy who had arrived in time, the hunter said that he would like to express his gratitude, but it was too late. With those words, he asked the boy to put a bullet in his forehead so that he wouldn't turn into a zombie and hurt people. Meanwhile, Jung looked at the notification that came from the system. It said that the unknown hunter had less than 20% health, which meant that if he let go of the past puppet, he could tame the soldier. Thinking that an experienced fighter would definitely be better than a weak guard, the guy immediately decided to heal the unknown zombie soldier. A sudden bright flash illuminated the nearby houses. However, even the anti-aircraft gunners could not see what happened there. After a while, Bao Shan fearfully opened his eyes. It seemed to him that he should be dead by now. The hunter rose abruptly from the ground and called out to his master in surprise. However, he was not surprised. To the soldier's great delight, his body had already recovered. Looking at the whole arms and legs, he thought for a moment, was this a gift from his master? The next moment, he clutched his hands to his face and thought, why did the word master come to his mind? Bao Shan thought that he felt embarrassed, but also a little tantalized, letting go of these musings. The zombie soldier looked up into the sky and wondered where the master had gone. Meanwhile, Zheng nervously looked at the place he had come to. His feet once again brought him to the doors of the gun store. The salesman saw the annoying boy again. Remembering the last time, he asked the boy if he really wanted to be thrown out again. At that moment, Zheng decided that it wouldn't happen again. Approaching the seller, the hero said that he had some cool things and he would like the owner to appraise them. If the price was right, the boy could sell them. The store owner replied that the last time he saw the guy, he was dressed as a guard. He also hinted that new recruits have a hard time putting together basic gear, and that quality is out of the question. With a wave of his hand, the salesman ordered the stranger to quickly show what he had brought so as not to waste time. What was his surprise when the boy handed him an unusual gun? Carefully hiding his surprise, the shopkeeper shouted that the boy was quite sick to be handing him a broken wreck. The hero excitedly asked the salesman if he wanted to see this weapon up close. Shocked by such a find, the owner lied that no matter how much you look at garbage, it's still garbage. Nevertheless, with his experienced eye, he caught the glow emitted by the gun in question. Staring at the junk, the seller didn't understand how such a shabby weapon could emanate such energy. The thought crept into his head that perhaps he had finally found the legendary gun. Deciding that this was a chance not to be missed, the store owner asked the kid to take a closer look at the weapon. Realizing the value of the find, the armorer immediately made an offer. He was willing to give 50000 as an apology for being rude last time. Your salesman thought that if this idiot agreed, he could later output the zombie's energy into this gun. In this simple and profitable way, he could sell this gun for 60000 in the future. Zhang, dissatisfied with this offer, replied that the shopkeeper had most likely forgotten to add one figure and said that he wouldn't sell this gun cheaper than 500000 the enraged gunsmith shouted that it was a robbery. However, afterwards, the amount only increased. In the end, he put a bag with $5 million in front of the stranger. At the end, the salesman added that if the boy had more good goods, he could safely bring them here. Meanwhile, the boy was already smelling the smell of money. The next instant, the front door of the store opened. The shopkeeper turned his head and wished the customers a good day. However, instead of visitors, he saw three bandits. Fang Shuo, a C-plus rank zombie soldier standing in front of him, happily announced to the armorer that it was time to pay for this month's payment. The old man sadly told the boy who sold him the gun that the store was closing and he had to leave. The boy wondered aloud, however, if in this world one had to pay for protection as well. In the next second, Zheng said that the Fang family people needed to be taught a lesson. The frightened salesman asked the kid not to be impulsive and S and not to cause trouble, but rather to get out of here quickly. At this point, the hero thought that this was not a good time for revenge. Deciding that his thirst for revenge might cause trouble for the bystanders, the boy headed towards the exit. But as soon as Jung took the door handle with his hand, the exit was blocked by a bandit. With a sense of superiority, Shuo ordered the guy to pay, and then he would get protection. The hero gave the bastard an embittered look and said that if he didn't let him go now, he would be on his knees, crying and begging for mercy. 
Amazed at such insolence from some brat, Shuo shouted that no one had ever dared to talk to him like that. In an attempt to extinguish the conflict, the gunsmith interjected into the conversation. He nervously asked the bandit to cool down. Since this boy was still a recruit and didn't know the rules, he'd better tell his superiors, who would teach him a lesson. Switching to the shopkeeper, the bandit said, let the guy get the hell out. However, the gunsmith hasn't paid them for three months, so let his daughter come and entertain the guys. The horrified salesman asked that his daughter be left alone as she has leg problems, not to mention debt. Ostrovenly looking at the debtor, Shuo said that they wanted other women, and he didn't care about the gunsmith's problems. At this moment, Jung interjected into the conversation. He calmly pointed out that he immediately realized that these bastards were from the Fong family. Such insolence from some brat surprised the leader of the group. Looking at the bastards with hatred, the boy said he never doubted that they all deserved to die. Deciding that this insolent man needed to be taught a lesson, the leader ordered his subordinate to hit the insolent man. The store owner tried to stop the bandits, saying that this kid couldn't take a hit from a zombie soldier. The level B hunter who approached the guy asked the salesman to relax, as his fist was so fast that the bastard wouldn't even feel pain. In the next instant, a powerful left jab flew into the hero's face. This attack was so strong that the store's windows blew out. Looking contentedly through the smoke, Shuo shouted to his subordinate, that he had only asked to hit the guy, but he hadn't asked to smash the store. Suddenly, the leader noticed that his fighter was trembling. He asked his subordinate in surprise, Is he afraid? But the hunter was absolutely terrified. He felt a strange sensation in his arm as he began to sweat. Looking at the limb, the fighter saw that it was covered in blood. Suddenly, a human silhouette appeared in the dispersing smoke. When the dust settled, everyone was horrified to see Jung standing calmly. Looking at the bandits with hatred, he said that it was just class pressure. The hunter who hit the guy was the first time he'd ever encountered something like this. Out of anger and incomprehension, he shouted furiously and threw himself at the boy. However, the hero simply waved his hand in front of his face and brought down the bandit's body. The blow was of such great force that the hunter's entire upper body was ripped to shreds. Unable to comprehend what had happened, everyone present stood as if stunned. The bandit's body flew heavily off to the side. No one but the hero could understand what was happening. Stunned with horror, the ringleader wondered why an ordinary person without zombie energy could kill a rank B soldier in a few seconds. However, in the next instant, the second fighter standing aside also pounced on the strange boy. But the guy instantly changed his stance and cracked the hunter's chest with a single blow. At the same time, the system sent a notification about getting two more level points. Jung calmly approached the remaining ringleader in solitary confinement. He shouted desperately that no one was allowed to touch him. Trying to scare the creepy stranger in any way, the type shouted that he was related to the head of Fangxiao City. And if this kid dared to touch him, the clan would send high-level zombie soldiers after him. The last sentence made Zheng wonder. Nan Yue was talking about high-level zombies. Now was the best time to learn more about them. Fang Shuo was glad that the boy had stopped. Indeed, every time he mentioned his relative's name, these idiots would immediately get scared. Deciding that he was now in charge of the situation, the ringleader shouted that Fang Xiao would find everyone the guy knew and kill them. But no sooner had the ringleader finished speaking, Zheng immediately threw a crushing blow at the rogue's face. The bastard's body flew helplessly to the other end of the room. The system notified him that his health level was down to 21%. Looking at the unconscious ringleader lying there, Zheng thought that if he didn't calculate the next blows, this guy would die. However, he wished that this guy could become his minion. Turning to the armorer, the hero suddenly asked if he would like to take revenge on this scoundrel. In response, the vendor waved his hands politely and said that he had already given up on these fights. When he sees people from the Fang family, he is afraid to even look at them. However, the very next moment he grabbed a bat in his hands and struck blow after blow, shouting that he would not pay any more money. After half an hour of rather sitting near the body, the armorer muttered that it turned out that hitting people was quite enjoyable, but tedious. Meanwhile, the ringleader's health level had dropped to 5%. Bringing his hand to his body, Zheng released the past minion and assigned a new one. The very next moment, Fang Shuo jumped up abruptly. The system showed that his health level was 100% again. Raising his head, the leader saw Zheng. However, in his current state, he recognized the boy as his master. Bowing down to the boy, Shuo asked him to apologize for his stupidity and disrespect. The leader also added that today he would give everything he had to serve his master. 
The old man stared in amazement at the bowed bandit. He honestly couldn't understand what was going on. The shopkeeper realized that in ten years of living in the city, he had never once seen the people of the Fang family bow down to an outsider. He wondered why this arrogant and overbearing bastard started acting like a dog. Jung glared menacingly at his new victim and ordered him to tell absolutely everything he knew about the Fang clan. After a while, the hero realized that this kid knows very little. Although, in addition, he claims to be a relative of Fang Xiao. In the next instant, the bandit grabbed a knife from behind his sinus and shouted to his master that since he was so useless, he would atone for his sins. In response, Zheng ordered the minion to stop. Thinking over what he had heard, the hero realized that nevertheless, he had at least learned about the existence of the necropolis. According to the thug, it's a great place to level up. In addition, there are zombies and higher level equipment there. The boy hopefully asked the shopkeeper if it turns out that if he finishes off Fang Xiao, it will all be over. The old man replied that it was a good idea, but the only question was whether the hero was confident that he could overpower the S-level guards. Just then, the guy realized that he had completely forgotten about this moment. Just then, the salesman added that the city was full of people who hated the Fang clan, but no one had been able to destroy it. One day, an S-class assassin tried to deal with them. But even he couldn't do anything with the might of the soldiers surrounding Fang Xiao. In addition, the armorer had also realized that if Fang Xiao died, the clan's power would be weakened. In that case, the zombies outside the city would surely try to take advantage of the situation. The hero replied that he had not thought about this question before. The shopkeeper came to the table and said that they hated the clan because the Fang family had killed many innocent people over the years, including the gunsmith's family. He then added that they would either make a peace treaty to end this apocalypse or find a better leader. Opening the desk drawer, the old man said, otherwise more chaos might ensue. But no matter what, he's just a small figure opening his store. And it's up to the boy to solve this problem. Taking out a wooden box from the table, the salesman held it out to the guy. Seeing some confusion on the boy's face, the shopkeeper replied that it was a gift to him. He noted that this weapon was made many years ago from the materials of the Necropolis. The system flashed a notification that the item's Necropolis pistol and Necropolis carambit had just been received. Both weapons were distinguished by the extreme durability of the material. Further events unfolded in a nearby small forest. After a short while of walking, the henchman led Jang to the tomb. It turned out to be a level A military Necropolis. Looking at the wooden entrance door, he noted that at least he now knew where the place was. Frowning at the tamed bandit, he ordered him to stand there and let no one in. Making sure the minion got it right, the boy walked over to the wooden door. After standing for a while and pondering his decision, he put his hand to the entrance. At the same moment, the system announced that the hero could choose a difficulty level. Normal, epic, or catastrophic. In addition, an additional condition was prescribed, according to which if there were no allies within a radius of 50 meters, the player alone had to destroy at least 100 enemies in an hour. Jung rather remarked that it was a copy of a game he played when he was a kid. The normal rewards weren't as substantial, but on the catastrophic level, one could die. After some more deliberation over the choice of difficulty, the guy decided to go for the epic level. In the same instant, the door vanished, and a steep, dusty staircase to a dark room opened before the boy. An hour into the descent, the hero noticed that even on the surface, he could already feel this strong energy coming from the zombies. A little nervous, he tried to imagine what awaited him down below. Remembering the old man's words from the store, the boy thought that it was too early to think about killing the head of the Fang family. He had to have a trump card up his sleeve first before he could do anything. The boy walked up to the huge doors. At that moment, he thought that after completing this task, he could think about killing the clan head. Pushing over the doors, he decided to swing them open to see what was inside. Suddenly, something pushed him, and the boy fell backwards. Suddenly, the system notified about the beginning of the mission in which it was necessary to kill the head of state. It was a surprise to the kid that until the ruler was killed, he could not leave the necropolis. The next instant, a helmeted soldier appeared in front of the player's face. Calling the hero Yang Jing, he shouted for the young man to stop pissing before the fight. Just then, a fighter furiously asked the guy where his and uniform and weapons were, and what clothes he was going to fight in. Zheng looked around and saw the same soldiers filling the entire space around him. The rain pouring down from the sky made the atmosphere heavy. 
Upon looking around, the player realized that he was on the deck of a landing craft. Around them were several dozen more of the same small ferries under fire, heading toward the shoreline. Immediately, the boy realized that he was in a simulation of a game that replicated the World War II setting. Suddenly, the fighter addressing the guy pulled a pistol from his holster. The next second, he handed the weapon to the boy, telling him to take his gun first and let him find something new on the battlefield. After a moment, however, the warrior looked at the guy across from him, eyes bulging in horror. Not understanding what was going on, he asked the stranger where he had gotten it all from. At that moment, the hero replied that this zombie energy-soaked outfit he bought from an old man. And he got it by taking the gear out of his inventory. The soldiers standing around looked at the strangely dressed weirdo with misunderstanding. At this point, the squad leader began to turn the ventel and ordered his subordinates to prepare to disembark from the ship. The very next moment the gangway was lowered and the soldiers prepared for the assault. At the same instant, however, they lost all protection from the bullets. The enemy, seeing the barge approaching, immediately opened fire and killed several men. It was like hell at that moment. The fighters had no time to do anything. The machine gun line mowed down one man after another. A concrete bunker was built on a hill above the sandy beach. The machine gunner sitting in it had an excellent view and shot the soldiers who were marching to their death with impunity. The fighter who met the protagonist in the boat looked around and realized that he was the only survivor of his squad. The next instant, however, a figure in black appeared beside him behind cover. The soldier was very frightened when he saw that very boy. The military man said the guy scared him a lot. He then looked at the stranger and asked where his helmet had disappeared to. Zheng replied that it was hidden by an illusion. Looking from behind cover at the concrete bunkers, the fighter noted that because tanks could not get through these barriers, the machine guns posed a huge threat to their infantry. Trying to think of a plan of further action, the commander ordered the private to wait for the machine gun to move to another location and then simply follow it. Hearing no reply, the soldier looked around and suddenly found that the boy had already run off somewhere. Meanwhile, a massive infantry attack on enemy positions was underway along the entire perimeter of the beach. Unexpectedly for the soldiers, an unknown guy flew past them with great speed in the direction of the enemy positions. Jumping over the anti-personnel ditch, the strange fighter swiftly approached the enemy fortifications. For a while, the hero stood in front of the tall concrete bunker. Then, unexpectedly, he soared into the sky with great speed. Watching it all in horror, the soldiers of the advancing army wondered if this was really a human being. Meanwhile, Jung soared to the top of the bunker. The machine gunners inside switched the fire of all their guns to the strange guy. The hero, aware of his superiority, smirked at his opponent's attempts to bring him down. The next moment, however, he realized it wasn't that simple. In the same second, the boy's body thudded into the concrete wall of the bunker. The frustrated guy remembered that because of the level's customized epic difficulty, physical strength had a 50% debuff. In another similar situation, he could have just jumped cover. The machine gunners standing in the fortification looked at each other. They still didn't understand what this strange man wanted to do. One of the soldiers looked out and looked down to make sure the boy was done. However, suddenly, a powerful hand squeezed his face, shattering his glasses to pieces. Pulling in a military man from cover and throwing him down with great force, the guy realized that the enemy troops were indeed zombies. A moment later, he sneaked into the crevice of the bunker with lightning speed, stunning his opponents before they could do anything about it. Taking advantage of the suddenness of his appearance, Jung started firing at the soldiers. He used his energy to be more accurate. Caught by surprise, the zombies had no time to retaliate and were instantly killed by the bullets fired by the hero. The power of the guy's machine gun bursts was so great that the shots quietly pierced the concrete. Upon learning of a defensive breakthrough in one of the bunkers, enemy troops moved an additional unit to aid the defenders. Suddenly, a grenade flew out of the front door into the shelter of the approaching group. And following it, several dozen more of the same grenades also flew into the doorway. The boy sat down near the exit and pulled his backpack out of his inventory. He was throwing grenades at the incoming reinforcements with great speed, happy that he'd gotten a good deal at the armorer. A moment later, the first explosion occurred. Like the soldiers in the bunker, the zombies who had come to the rescue were unable to react to the unexpected attack. The first grenade was followed by all the subsequent grenades. A great many explosions went off in front of the entrance to the shelter. Meanwhile, in one of the neighboring breakout sites, the soldiers of the advancing army could do nothing about the strange creatures that had suddenly appeared. In an attempt to do something about these unusual creatures, the men of one of the squads fired at the creature with its back turned to them. 
The monster with the bloody mouth turned around to face the attackers in the next instant. The fighters with automatic rifles stared in horror at the enemy. The private asked the captain what kind of bastards they were and why they were so hard to kill. In response, the commander said in a trembling voice that he had no idea either. Staring at the monster in horror, the captain couldn't understand why there was such a serious gap in strength between them. In all the trenches around, there were virtually no living soldiers left by that point. Meanwhile, the creature headed toward the last two attackers. The captain said in horror that these monsters had almost killed the entire company, leaving no more than a dozen men alive. The private replied in horror that he had run out of ammunition. Terrified, the young soldier asked the commander to retreat before it was too late. The commander replied that they would not be able to, as the monster was fast and would have no trouble catching up with them. Realizing that he was also out of ammunition, the captain pulled a knife from behind his sinus and said he could still fight. However, in the next instant, the creature pounced on the surviving fighters. At that moment, the commander realized that his body was numb with fear. Possessed by the terror that gripped him, the captain simply watched the monster's hand come closer to his face. But suddenly, the enemy soldier opposite was blown into thousands of small particles. Looking to his left, the fighter was horrified to find that a monster palm had fallen beside him. The commander, who had finally lost all understanding of the situation, looked back to see the source of such a heavy blow. A strangely dressed private stood opposite him, raising a weapon the captain had never seen before. Lowering zombie-energized shotgun, Zheng told the soldiers that their opponents were zombies. To kill them, one must either destroy their brains or simply smash their skulls. The captain of the attacking army regarded the weapon in the hands of the unknown soldier with interest. There was no limit to his surprise. Even at a conservative estimate, this shotgun had a power comparable to a small caliber shell. The private standing a little to the side exhaled, thinking that they were saved. However, at the same time, an unknown object approached him from above with great speed. The zombie that fell from the sky stomped the young soldier without difficulty. The captain turned around in horror and found the monster in front of him. The moment the commander felt completely powerless before the creature's might. In front of him towered a huge monster that was much taller than all the other monsters. It was the major of the Imperial Elite a 40th level A-rank zombie. The next instant, the creature extended its huge hand at the captain's head. The soldier couldn't move from his seat because of the incredible fright he felt. However, something sharply threw him back. Jung grabbed the fighter by the collar and threw him behind his back, ordering him to get out of here quickly and as far away as possible. The next second, the guy opened fire on the monster with his shotgun. However, the shot simply slammed into the creature's body without doing any damage. This turn of events frightened the boy a little, but suddenly, when the smoke cleared, instead of the zombie's body, the hero saw a concrete slab with a huge hole gaping in it. It turned out that the monster had managed to grab a nearby piece of concrete and cover himself from the shot. Jung marveled at the speed of this creature, realizing that it couldn't be defeated by head-on attacks. A moment later, the zombie shattered the concrete slab in his hands into several dozen stones, which flew towards the hero by inertia. One of the debris almost reached the guy's leg. However, he managed to retreat in time. The stones were injected into the ground with great speed, raising a large cloud of dust. The zombie tried to look around the area in front of him from his height, trying to find the soldier's body. However, a feeling told the monster that something was wrong here. At the same instant, another shot rang out. The creature had time to get its bearings and used its strength to pull out a block of earth that sheltered it from the shot. The shot once again hit the makeshift shield. Looking around, the creature once again failed to see its attacker but it looked up and saw a dark object approaching from above. In flight, Zheng fired a few accurate shots, using his energy to kill the monster for sure. Once again, however, all hits came on the armor. That's when the guy discerned that the zombie had fenced itself all around the perimeter with one large shelter. As he landed on the ground, he began to think about what he should do in this situation. Pulling a large caliber rifle out of his inventory, the hero opened fire to kill. The bullet flew through the cover at a tremendous speed, such a shot was surely going to end this fight. Looking into the resulting hole, the guy saw that the creature's body had been struck. However, it had not yet begun to dissolve, which meant that the zombie was still alive. At that moment, the hero decided that this battle would be more difficult than he had anticipated. Trying not to think about the possible dire outcome, Jung decided he needed to recharge. But a second later, a stone fist came from the left side of the trench into the boy's face. A blow of that magnitude would probably kill any normal person. However, the hero managed to block the attack with his sniper rifle. Nevertheless, 
he was now pinned against the opposite wall of the trench. At the same moment, Zheng realized that his equipment was strong enough to withstand such blows. But his weapons were useless against the monster's strength. Glancing to his left, the boy saw that the monster had already broken free from its hiding place. Looking closer, the boy saw that the monster was trying to heal itself. Then he realized that the creature was trying to buy time for itself to regain its strength. Realizing that the zombie was still too weak to heal and keep up the pressure with his ability at the same time, the guy cracked the stone arm with his knee. The monster immediately noticed this and decided to use another skill. In just a moment, several stone stakes had formed under Jung's feet. Realizing that unfortunately he would have to retreat, he started to jump away. At the same time, the stone peaks continued to appear one after another. After a few seconds, the hero stopped at one location and fired his sniper rifle several times in the direction of the monster. The creature realized the threat and reactivated another ability. In the next instant, several stone slabs formed in the trajectory of the shot. The zombie had intended it to be enough to stop the blow. However, the first bullet penetrated most of these slabs without any problems. However, one of the hideouts did stop the shot. Meanwhile, the creature raised another slab of stone in front of it. But as soon as it ended with another fortification, a crack immediately formed in the new barrier. A second later, two powerful shots pierced the stone slab. The bullets of the large caliber rifle were driving into the monster's body with great speed, tearing off both of its arms. A moment later, Zheng was almost right up to the zombie, holding his weapon at the ready. Utilizing the effect of surprise, he pointed the barrel of his rifle directly at the confused creature's face. However, the monster suddenly regrew both of its lost limbs. He grabbed the barrel of the rifle with one hand, and with the other he began to create giant blocks of stone around him. After a moment, he managed to grab for the boy with his right hand. At this moment, both opponents were in the center of one huge stone palm. Jangan examined the fingers that appeared from the ground in horror, and wondered if this zombie had decided to die with him. Just before the guy had time to realize what was happening, a stone palm closed and squeezed both enemies. After a few seconds, the dust around it cleared. For a moment, it seemed that the battle was over. However, in the same instant, blue flashes appeared all around the stone palm. At the same moment, Jung chopped the huge fingers with his new karambit. The system sent a notification that a level 40 a rank zombie had been destroyed. Six improvement points were awarded as a reward. Meanwhile, while the boy was trying to catch his breath, someone was watching him through binoculars from a nearby cliff. The unknown man with a smile on his face was gazing intently at the battlefield. Lowering his binoculars, the blonde-haired guy noted that this boy was quite interesting. This person was Nan Yue's brother, Nan Feng. Meanwhile, the hero was looking at the fallen zombie corps with interest. At that moment, he thought that in the necropolis, you can't use enhanced shooting. So after the upgrade, this core wouldn't work. Opening the inventory, the guy put the item in there, deciding it was best to save it for later. At that time, Zheng decided to traditionally allocate 7 points for improvement and keep the remaining two points as a reserve. The system notified that the 42nd level had been reached. Suddenly, a large iron door fell from the sky to the ground. The system alerted the boy to the completion of the first stage and required him to move on to the next. As soon as the guy opened the door, the space around him abruptly began to change. After the yellow flash disappeared, the hero found himself at a new stage. Suddenly, the rumble of engines was heard not far from Zheng. He looked around and saw a column of Sherman tanks passing him. Running behind the wall, the hero thought that if there was a tiger tank sitting in ambush somewhere nearby, it would be Sherman's end. The commander of one of the armored vehicles coming by saw a civilian. Pointing his fingers in the direction of the convoy, he warned the unknown man that it was not safe here. However, immediately after this phrase, a shell flew into his tank, blowing the turret and the men in it to pieces. Scared and hiding behind the wall, Zheng thought that he seemed to have jinxed it. Opposite the column of American armored vehicles stood a German heavy tank. The crew of the fighting vehicle had an excellent view of the road on which the enemy was moving. The commander of the second tank in the column ordered the rest of the armored vehicles to turn to the combat position. The officer who took command shouted that the thing was slow and their advantage was mobility. He then ordered some of the tanks to attack from the city side and the rest from the opposite direction. Several armored vehicles swiftly headed towards the residential area. Passing one of the city blocks, the lead tank pulled out to meet the enemy crew. The commander did not immediately notice the danger at the other end of the street. The tank hastily began to turn its turret. The next instant, however, the Tiger fired at the American armored vehicle. Sherman's crew did not have time to react to the unexpected attack. In a second, the tank was blown to pieces. 
Meanwhile, the second part of the column moved in an organized formation to bypass the city. On one of the hills, they could clearly see a picture of a battle taking place in a residential area. One of the commanders shouted that it appeared that the urban group had been completely destroyed. Meanwhile, the lead tank reported the sighting of two more tigers right on the course. The commander of the armored vehicle ordered the group to spread out to distract them and bypass them from the rear. The next instant, the Shermans and Tigers opened fire on each other. The German tank's shots hit two American vehicles at once. At the same time, the Tigers received no damage. One of the Shermans managed to get around the rear of a German tank and shot it in the engine. When it burst, the shell fragments hit one of the fuel tanks. As a result of the resulting fire, the tank was rendered inoperable. Looking at the result of the work done, the commander of one of the tanks stated that this Tiger was out of action. But before Sherman's crew could get their bearings, a shell flew into the left side of the turret. By then, the second German tank had already massacred the rest of the enemy and switched to the remaining armored vehicle. After seeing the result of the work done, the remaining Tiger turned around. The commander of the combat vehicle leaned out of the hatch. With binoculars in hand, he looked over the battlefield. Suddenly, another tank appeared in the distance, coming out from behind a hill. Looking at the unusual shape of the vehicle, the soldier realized that he had never seen such a model before, neither in his army nor in the enemy army. Still, figuring that the model wasn't that important since their tiger was invincible, he ordered them to open fire. The next instant, a German armored car fired on the enemy. The most powerful armor-piercing shell was directed clearly into the turret of the enemy tank. However, a second later, to the utter surprise of the German crew, the shell ricocheted off and flew upward. This was the first time the Tiger commander had ever encountered something like this. At that moment, he was at a loss and did not know what to do next. Jang, who was inside the American Abrams, made sure that his armored vehicle dominated this battle. Deciding that now it was his turn, the guy fired back at the German tank. While in the air, the subcaliber shell dropped its plumage and rapidly approached the enemy armored vehicle. The technologies of the different eras were so disparate that the Abrams shell went through the German vehicle. Another second later, the German tank's turret was torn to shreds. Having secured the victory, the hero decided that his armored vehicle was now out of use for the time being. After a second, the guy put the Abrams away in his inventory. Jung looked at the statistics screen. At that moment, he decided that leaving the extra points was a good decision. Thanks to this, he was able to steal the tank from the Fong family. After inspecting the nearby fortress walls, the hero realized that the tank crew was not zombies. It seems that an elite army of monsters is inside. Meanwhile, in one of the city blocks, two tigers stood looking in different directions. The commander of one of the armored vehicles looked through the periscope and could not believe that the unknown man had managed to destroy their tank. The commander of one of the armored vehicles looked through the periscope and could not believe that the unknown man had managed to destroy their tank. However, the officer could not have guessed that the culprit behind the destruction of their ally was already nearby in one of the houses. Deciding that now was the perfect moment to attack, the hero prepared to attack. At the same instant, an American Abrams appeared inside the building in front of the German tanks. The very next second, the heroes fired in the direction where the enemy armored vehicles were. A subcaliber shell pierced through two German tanks at once. The commander of the Tiger, standing a little further away, shouted that the unknown person was firing from inside the addition. However, the crew of this armored vehicle did not have time to react to the unexpected danger and was also destroyed. Meanwhile, a column of tigers was moving toward the city. One of the commanders on the radio asked the colonel why they had mobilized the whole company so abruptly. Had something happened to their advance party in the city? The head of the group stated that an entire platoon of their tanks had been destroyed in an urban development. In addition to their column, a squad of royal tigers is coming to the rescue. Indeed, behind the main group of troops was a detachment of the newest German vehicles. The commander of the lead armored vehicle shouted into the radio that an enemy tank had been spotted two kilometers ahead. The colonel relayed over the general channel for the soldiers to stop fidgeting, as this distance was not considered unsafe. As soon as the leader of the group said this, Abrams fired at the approaching column. A subcaliber shell, charged with incomprehensible energy, rapidly approached the lead vehicle. As with the battle in the city, one shot was enough to decide the outcome. The American tank hit all the enemy armored vehicles with one shot. Jung decided to ride along the column to inspect if there were any tanks left intact. His attention was caught by the Royal Tiger standing at the end. Looking at the armored vehicle, the guy realized that this tank was the only one that hadn't exploded. Suddenly, 
two red tentacles flew out from the hatch of the royal tiger. A few seconds later, the entire hull of the tank was already covered with tentacles. Jung didn't expect the meeting with the boss to be right now. But what was his surprise when the monster opposite completely copied his tank? The system notified him that the boss opposite was a level 50 zombie. Looking at the towering monster, the guy was surprised to note that this turret is a copy of his tank. At the same second, the Spider King fired a shot in the hero's direction. The boy still managed to soar into the sky while stowing his armor machine in his inventory. While in the air, he spun the tank once again. Jung decided that from the looks of it, the blind spot of this monster should be its top. In the same instant, he took aim and fired back. The subcaliber shell reached the roof of the monster's turret, lightning fast, almost managing to pierce it in time. However, the zombie had incredible reactions and managed to dodge at the same second. At that moment, the hero realized that he was now in a vulnerable position. The next moment, red tentacles flew out of the hatch of the commander's turret toward the boy. They firmly encircled the Abram's hull and began to squeeze it. Realizing that he couldn't break through the armor, the monster decided to smash his opponent to the ground. With that thought in mind, he swung his tentacles. Seeing this maneuver, Jung realized that this thing was going to stomp him into the ground. Deciding that now was not the time to stay in the tank, the guy stowed the armored vehicle in his inventory. Immediately, he found himself in the air right above the monster's turret. As he flew, the boy grabbed one of the red tentacles. When the zombie saw it, he swung around, intending to smash the insolent man to the ground. However, being in the air, Heroes intercepted the initiative and did not let himself be killed. After flying over the monster's roof, he landed to the side. Pulling his tentacles into the commander's turret, the zombie began to decide what he should do next. Jung found himself at the monster's rear. However, this did not give him any advantage as the monster was too agile. And yet, flying over the creature's hull, the guy managed to get explosives on some of its parts. After some time, the explosive packages detonated. Several powerful explosions occurred, partially shattering the monster's hull into pieces. The hero stood back and looked at the flaming wreckage. However, there was no notification of destruction, so the monster was still alive. At the same instant, several red tentacles rushed out from the smoke enveloping the tank. One by one, they swarmed toward the burning armored vehicle standing off to the side. At the same second, a human silhouette appeared from the monster's main body. It was the muscular blue body of a creature that looked like an old man. The hero was dumbfounded and stared at it in horror. Incredibly, in front of him was the body of Feng Mao's grandfather. The boy was frightened, trying to figure out what was going on here. How could this old man be here and turn into a zombie? In that case, it would seem that all the villagers had died as well. At this moment, two red tentacles emerged from the ground and encircled the boy's legs. Several tentacles ripped the gun barrels out of the burning tanks and pointed them at the hero. In the next instant, they fired at the same time, creating a violent explosion at one point. Against a huge cloud of smoke, a zombie stood motionless. He regarded the ashes he had turned the young hunter into with a smile. After a few seconds, the smoke slowly began to disperse. Suddenly, it turned out that the guy had managed to pull out of the inventory Abrams, which took on all the powerful blows. The old man was looking at the hull of the tank and noticed that it had the commander's hatch open. A moment later, an unidentified object rapidly burst through the smoke. He swept past all the red tentacles in lightning speed towards the monster's main body. His speed was so fast that the zombie had no time to react to this attack. At the same moment, the monster saw Jung in front of it, holding a carambit in his hand. The creature could not have defended itself under any circumstances. The hero struck dozens of blows in one second, chopping the zombie to pieces. During the attack, the guy managed to cut the old man's head off. Jeng jumped down and his head rolled to his feet. Leaning over his defeated opponent, the hero looked sadly into the old man's eyes. Feng Mao looked into the guy's eyes in surprise. He recognized Yang Zheng and asked what he was doing here. The guy ignored the old man's question and asked him what happened Xiao Qi. The zombie grew dramatically sad and replied that he urgently needed to save his granddaughter. But then a shot rang out in the distance. The bullet hit the old man's head and shattered it. Looking at the droplets of blood flying by, the hero saw a notification that he had been awarded nine improvement points for killing the monster. Turning around sharply, he surveyed the direction from which the shot had come. A blonde stranger in a German officer's uniform stood across from him. He called the boy by name and said it was not his style to be soft on zombies. Looking confidently at the kid, the strange man pronounced that his name was Nan Fung, and he was the brother of Jung's acquaintance. Looking angrily at the stranger, the hero replied that it was up to him to decide who he wanted to kill. Then he asked the blonde guy why he killed the monster for him. 
Fung replied that he didn't come here to feud as they both have a common enemy, and that enemy is the Fang family. These words reassured Zheng a little. However, he was still skeptical of such an alliance. Just then, a type of officer's uniform used some sort of ability and said that once the hero finished the test, they would meet at the eagle's nest. At the same second, another metal door fell not far from Zheng, leading to the next stage. Waving his hand, Feng said with a smile on his face that he would wait for the guy. As soon as the unknown type vaporized, the hero thought that there was obviously some kind of trick here. Having strengthened himself to level 50, the boy took hold of the doorknob and thought that for now he just needed to pass the test, and he would find out for himself from there. In the same instant, the space around him began to change again. After a few moments, the guy discovered that he had a pilot's helmet on his head and a respirator pulled over his people. Looking around, he saw that he was in the cockpit of an airplane. There were several of these same fighters around him. Immediately, the boy realized that there would be an air battle on this level. Zheng wondered how many points it would take to upgrade an ordinary World War II fighter to a fifth-generation fighter. He realized that there was no way to calculate it, so he just decided to try. Immediately, the space around his plane discharged yellow energy. As it turned out, the available points were enough to get your hands on an F-22 fighter jet. One of the pilots of a neighboring plane looked in horror at the object that appeared next to him. Not understanding what had happened, he thought it was just a hallucination. The next instant, however, he failed to keep his eyes on the sky and was suddenly attacked by an enemy fighter, the entire cockpit with a machine gun burst. Immediately, the American plane flew swiftly toward the ground. In a frontal attack on a group of naval fighters was an air group of Japanese planes. Seeing the approaching danger and realizing the numerical superiority of the enemy, the lead monoplane ordered the others to scatter. One of the fighters dive-bombing from high altitude radioed the sighting of an unidentified model, declaring the need for a priority attack. Seeing several enemy planes approaching him from the rear, Jung decided to start maneuvering. Meanwhile, one of the Japanese had already taken the hero in his sights and prepared to open fire. However, the guy who calculated everything turned on the turbo mode in time and started accelerating. In a matter of seconds, he had picked up a high speed that allowed him to get away from the vertical attack as quickly as possible. Rapidly gaining altitude, Zheng's fighter jet exceeded the speed of sound. Climbing to an altitude out of reach of the Japanese planes, the hero looked around and realized that he had managed to break away from the Zero. Meanwhile, the Japanese were talking on the radio, discussing an unidentified object that had gone into the clouds. The squadron commander ordered his subordinates to be ready for an unexpected attack. But no sooner had he finished than his plane exploded at the same second. The pilot of the fighter flying nearby looked around, trying to find the source of where the attack had come from. However, his Zero was soon blown up by an unknown aircraft as well. Flying high in the clouds, Zheng excitedly muttered that these old wrecks wouldn't be able to take cover from air-to-air -air missiles. Pet the cat! <coughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,